What is going on, guys? Your boy Joey Shakes here. To come to you guys with obviously a live stream after the preseason game, game two against the Patriots. The Eagles get blown out, thirty-five nothing. Um, obviously, we have some concerns about why there were a lot of players out in this game. Um, the news has come in already for Mike K that Ertz, you know, Hertz came up for warmups today. Couldn't, didn't really feel good. His abdomen didn't feel good. So he ended up going to the hospital today. Um, I'm hoping um, he is fine. Um, but uh, it says that he was cleared and is fine from Nick Sirianni from his little presser today. Um, so we didn't have Jalen Hurts today. So that was the start of everything that was going on. But what really came out of it, it was totally a different kind of, you kind of clickbaited this game into being a rehearsal game. Um, you know, I wanted more. I want to see more of Devontae Smith actually played a lot more that we thought he was going to play, but it didn't really look good because our offensive line wasn't out there. They sat out the first team offensive line. They sat out the first team defensive line. They sat out the starting cornerbacks. Okay. So you had some running backs in there. You had obviously, you know, Alex Singleton having six tackles. They played a fantastic game today, but um, I thought Sean Bradley did okay. You know, I thought the linebackers played T.J. Edwards on a really good tackle. Jack Stahl at tight end actually played pretty good on one. He broke two tackles for a first down and had another first down. And um, I thought, you know, a few guys did play. Elijah Holyfield at the end of the, you know, the fourth quarter thought he played pretty good. You know, the Patriots had their starters out for a good quarter and a half. At least it was 13 nothing by that time. But really no excuse for the Eagles to play this bad in depth-wise. I know, like, you know, there's a lot of depth. You know, we're looking for more debt players to kind of turn up. You know, I guess Sirianni is giving these extra guys, you know, some practice here. But, I mean, you couldn't turn anything into points right now. Joe Flacco had no time to throw the ball, and he just started panic throwing because he's seeing that he's going to get hit over and over again. So what do you do here? Um, I feel bad for all the people that went to this game. I really do because I don't know what Nick Sirianni was thinking and – what these we couldn't generate any points as of right now so um i have no idea the, the offensive line was horrible matt Pryor played horrible driscoll they they put him at a guard at one point um you know toth was bad i mean opita wasn't good i mean it, it wasn't good it just wasn't good so you have the um it's it's I don't know how you get prepared for this game as of right now. So I don't know how you get prepared. Um, you know, people were coming in the chat and they were thinking all these different things that this team is going to be this bad, but this team just didn't have any starters. They rested all their starters, guys. I mean, that's what happened. That's what's going to happen. But are you going to lose 35 to nothing? Should you lose 35 to nothing? I don't know. They had Nate Herbig at center. Nate Herbig just, I don't know. He played center for a little bit last week against the Steelers, but Nate Herbig just literally hiked the ball and it went over 10 feet over his head I don't know what happened but it was ugly it was an ugly game I thought the linebackers did well the running backs did well Jack Stahl did well I mean there really wasn't more than that Alex Singleton had six tackles Alex Singleton was probably the star of what was going on today it looked really really bad um so I don't know. Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts um, went to the hospital today. If nobody was here early on the stream, Jalen Hurts went to the hospital. Um, he had a, real, a lot of pain in his abdomen today, even when he warmed up today. Because I was going to make a video on why he was, like, dancing and he was he looked like he was fine in warm-ups and then kind of just, you know, fell flat. So I didn't know what was going on. But, um, you know, our secondary looked really bad today. There's no depth behind Darius Slay and, and behind Darius Slay, behind Steven Nelson. There's no depth, period. I thought at least behind Zach McPherson we'd be playing, you know, that we'd play okay with Zach McPherson. Zach McPherson for a whole series got torched. That Nikhil Harry, if he didn't get hurt before he hit the ground, would have been a fourth reception for a long reception by, Z you know, uh, Zach McPherson didn't play well. Period. And Nick Mullins. <laughs> Nick Mullins, not only did Nick Mullins have no time to throw, okay, Nick Mullins had no time to throw, but he just, 
Nick Mullins is horrible, okay? I didn't think he was going to look this bad. I thought, you know, having a veteran arm and, you know, at least giving guys good looks. I'm not looking at him to be a skilled player that's going to throw it down the field and, and get these Hail Mary touchdowns, okay? I'm not looking for that with Nick Mullins. All I'm looking for is just him throwing the ball, making some guys look good. But that didn't work. Obviously, that didn't happen, period. Okay, that didn't happen. So, Nick Sirianni should really be ashamed of himself today for having this why have the starting receivers out if you have literally not one guy starting on your offensive line how are you going to give looks to Devonte smith that's not fair how fair is that you click baited this game as it was a dress rehearsal game okay it, it looked like it period it looked it really looked like it. it it was really embarrassing today i thought it was really embarrassing i did and people in the chat were getting really mad and i i can't blame them for getting mad like i could say it's no big deal but at the same time it's still 35 to nothing okay at the end of the day you couldn't even generate points at at some point there's going to be a balance between the patriots and the eagles having third to fourth stringers on the field and still your team was getting run down your team was getting run down their throats they couldn't cover nobody. They couldn't really defend anything, and there was no pressure, okay? Other than Milton Williams at this point, other than really Milton Williams, um, you know, and, you know, Milton Williams had two penalties on him. You know, the, the offensive line was holding Milton Williams. I thought he would have sacked Mac Jones once today. I thought Milton Williams did very well, but, you know, he can't do it all by himself. If he's getting held... There's nothing else. If there's defensive ends can't do anything next to him, then I don't really know. But this was a bad game. This was an awful game. I, and I didn't think I would get this mad. Who thought I would have got this mad today over this game? But really, since the snap, it was god-awful. I thought we had a couple good runs from Jordan Howard. I thought Kenneth Gainwell played pretty good. You know, they had some pat good passes. Uh, he's got those wide receiver hands. He looks really good. But this is just... I don't think this is a good idea, period, for to keep these guys out. Like, look, I understand that you only have three preseason games, but you got to try to – you you have three preseason, pre, three preseason games, which means that you have – more that you have more time to rest you can rest guys for the jets game and then you have another few weeks to rest as of right now but that was horrible that was so like a punch in the face to the fans to just nick what are you doing that was so like how like you can't play the cautious game i like people are like oh maybe he's just keeping them out to not you can't play the cautious game you it's only the second week of preseason like you have like three four weeks you have a you have a good amount of time before the regular season starts so what are you afraid of you know like I haven't really talked down on him too much, but this is just ridiculous. Philly, uh, the Philly Talk Podcast, appreciate the uh, super chat. Says no stars, but that was disrespectful. If you guys haven't subscribed to Philly Talk, please subscribe to his channel. It does a good job, by the way. Um, he covers the Eagles. He probably live streamed today. I really didn't see who else was live streaming today. So if he did, you know, go to his channel and check his stuff out. But um, guys, like this is just, I. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I really don't. Um, I I really need someone else to come in this chat because I don't know if I could rant on for this long. I mean, I can, but this, I, I did not enjoy this. Period. I, I didn't enjoy this. Um, uh, I'm 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 kind of pissed. I'm kind of mad over this, to be honest. I mean, this this is not good. This is not what I wanted. <sighs> It's just ridiculous. James A says, Hi, Joey Shakes. One of the best Eagles YouTube creators. God bless. Hey, appreciate it, James. Much love, dude. I, 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 I don't know what else to say about it. I, I don't. Like, how do you take out everybody? Why? What good looks are you going to get out of your receivers if you take out your offensive line, your defensive line, your corners? I mean, you took out almost the whole, the, the whole team. You took out almost the whole entire team. And, and what are you supposed to get out of it? It, it's, it's, it shouldn't happen. This should not happen. The Russian spy said it perfectly, too. Flacco made Smith look bad. I mean, it wasn't just Flacco, though. Flacco needs an offensive line. See, when he was with the Jets, he had, he had no one block. I mean, he played horrible. I mean, this is how bad he played, okay? When he has no offensive line, he can't do anything. Last week, he looked great. You know why? Because we had starters in the game, and he and guys held blocks, and he had time to throw, and he looked great. 
But this is unacceptable. You had people paying their hardworking money to come to this game to see that tonight. I mean, that's just, it's unexplainable. This is why sometimes, like, I don't like beat writers that ask really dumb questions, but I hope these beat writers are going up Nick's, I, I hope they're giving Nick a lot tonight. Because I, I don't know, I'm going to watch his, I haven't watched his press conference. Obviously, I saw the news about Jalen Hurts being in the hospital. You know, thank God he's okay. But this is unex- this this is this is unacceptable for people to pay pay to come to this game. And I don't even care, but you can't even put up a point. I know it's preseason, but you guys can't even generate a point that pay, good the Patriots good for them. They have good depth. They're coached well. I don't know what are these other guys not playing enough? What what's the problem? Cuz everyone this defense, everyone got blocked. They were running down our throat. They were checking the ball down. I don't know how many times they checked the ball down or like that was it. That was pretty much what they were doing with Mac Jones. Really, at the end of the day. Bergain 31 the super chat. Appreciate the super chat, man. The Stars was beating the Pats up all week. We good. <laughs> We did fantastic in joint practice. Fantastic, because we had, number one, we had Jalen Hurts throwing the football. Number two, we had an offensive line. So, obviously, we had a lot of one-on-ones as well with these receivers and cornerbacks, but they were getting toasted. They were getting toasted, but the Patriots had an easy day today. They had a very easy day today. The only question I have is really is just, you have these third, fourth stringers, but sooner or later, the Patriots are going to put in their guys that really aren't that good, but they looked good against us so it's just, I don't know what to take out of it as of right now. I really don't. But that was just ridiculous. Kevita Prince says, Nick said at the press conference after finding out Hertz was not playing, he decided to sit the starting O line, which I think it was, well, it was the wrong move. Uh, why is that? Why? Why sit them out? Why do that? For what? What was the point of doing that? Look, preseason is preseason, I understand, but guys, we need to, you know, you play for a series or two last game and that's it. Like, you need to, you have a lot of time after this game to rest. You have a lot, if, look, if at least if they put Joe Flacco in, he was getting hit a good amount of times in the starting all line or something did happen, then yeah, then take him out and then just start sitting guys out. That's perfectly fine. But because Jalen Hurts didn't play, they that's the reason why. You, you sit out your – you don't just sit out your – okay, so why would you sit out your whole defensive line? Why would you sit out Steven Nelson and Darius Slay? You have nothing behind that. Obviously, with Zach McPherson playing as bad as he did, as bad as – he's a fourth-round pick. He gave, a, he gave up a touchdown, a P.I. call against the Steelers last week. He got off blocks. He made some good tackles. This game, he just totally just trashed. I mean, he, he looked horrible. It was that bad as of right now. This was that bad. Okay. Tim Rustemi says, will starters play a lot versus the Jets? Probably not. It would make no sense to start. Why a week later you're going to put starters in? You know what I mean? Maybe he will once Jalen Hurts comes back and he's fine. Maybe I mean, this, this was just a prime moment for him to, you know, he had to really be in this game. But you know what? Like, if you start, look, if Jalen Hurst didn't play, it's fine. But you should have had other guys in the game. Like, you totally depleted our offensive defense. You totally depleted our offensive line. So, what is that? How are you supposed to make these receivers look good? How are you supposed to see what you have? Devontae Smith had one really good catch. The other, the other throws from Flacco were just uncatchable. You couldn't catch any of them, period. Okay. I don't know who made this decision, but it sounded like it sounded like if Nick said that, I'm gonna look at the, I'm gonna look at this tape tonight, this press conference tonight, and see if he actually said, "Oh, I decided to sit out the starters because Jalen Hurts wasn't playing." So why'd you sit out your defensive line? Why'd you sit out your starting corners? I don't care if Mil- Milton Williams, I thought played really well, would have had a sack on Mac Jones and another tackle today. He got held twice today. Teron Jackson didn't see much from him today. They were moving him from defensive end to defensive tackle, so they were moving him around. Obviously, they, they need to they need to get playing time for these other guys. I understand that. So obviously, they need to you know they're going to form a practice squad. They need to see what they're getting for their practice squad as well because they're going to set guys up for their practice squad during the season. So I understand that, but. 
Nick Mullins is just, I don't know if he's capable to even be a practice squad quarterback. The guy can't even make throws. Okay, obviously in practice during the regular season, he's going to be fine. Like He's not going to get hit or anything like that. But it looked bad. So people people need to see that we you know we have backups that play in games but not third fourth string like third and fourth string these guys aren't going to play everyone needs to understand that okay everyone needs to understand that because some people took it over the top today saying all oh, this team's going to be bad this year because we look bad in the third fourth quarter second quarter the whole game whatever it is okay Nate Herbig playing. Nate, Nate Matt Pryor, Jeff Toth. I mean, these offensive linemen. Who they, we had no. Our backup Justiga. He ended up getting cut the other day. He ended up getting cut by the Eagles. So they had to put another center in. So obviously, Herbig is trying to get snaps at center right now. So this is just. This is. I could say bad things right now, but this is. This is on this is just unacceptable. This is totally unacceptable. So I appreciate everybody being here tonight. There's 196 people in the chat. Guys, appreciate you coming. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. We do cover the Eagles all year round. We're having our post game stream right now. And obviously, we're gonna have more videos out tomorrow and, and probably more tonight. We're gonna have the Philly Shakedown Podcast with Philly 500 on my channel uh, t this Saturday at nine. So check that out. As well, guys, we cover the Eagles. Subscribe to the channel. You guys aren't going to miss anything all season long. Trust me. Um, this is I like I love doing this. This is what we do every single week, every day. Um, so, if they start putting in the starters next week, it, to me, it just makes no sense. So that's less time to rest before the regular season. It's less time to rest before the regular season. You should have did it today. So this team looked totally dead. This team looked totally dead. I mean, I saw nothing. I saw a few things today. That's it. The linebackers did well. Alex Singleton played well. Jack Stahl played great today. Jason Kroom is probably has a season-ending injury, most likely an ACL. So that's another tight end on top of Tyree Jackson being out eight to ten months. So at this point, or eight, eight to eight to ten weeks, sorry. I have eight to ten months. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's gonna be next year by that time. Um, you know, I thought. I thought Gainwell did fantastic on the pat on, on receiving and running the ball. I thought Elijah Holyfield in the fourth quarter did fantastic. They got to give him more of a shot because last year had a really good two weeks of training camp, whatever they had, had a really good camp last year, and they activated him for one game last year and didn't do anything. Didn't didn't hand the ball off to him once. But they let Miles Sanders play today. Why Miles Sanders? You've been sitting him out. You let him play, but you don't have your offensive line, at least a couple guys, something to show for. I know some of these guys will not play. These guys will not make the team. The guys that you've seen in the third and fourth quarter will not play. But, you know, until we start switching guys out, I mean, we were down to – pretty much nothing um and our guys were just getting just beat i mean the patriots i gotta give them you know i give them props for just you know the way they were playing against us because it seemed like everything was working check down screen passes i mean everything was just working at this point everything was working so you know what? They sat out guys, but guys need to play. Guys need to play. It is what it is. This is what has to happen. Guys need to show up. I mean, I don't want to keep guys out for so long to the point where I come to a first game and they're not used to hitting and they're not, you know, like, look, they're veterans. There's some guys are veterans, but they got to play to at least, you know, let the juices flow a little bit. You can't just keep these guys out for this this long. If you're if you're not starting them today, you're not starting them next week, and then you literally for weeks are not starting them, and for weeks you're just letting them sit. You know, come to a first game. I'm telling you right now, I better see no injuries that first game. That's all I got to say. If these guys are getting this much rest from now until the first game of the season, they better get as much rest as possible. And I swear to God, if I even see anyone get injured in that first game, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be more than two, three people. I swear. I swear to God. So. I don't know where this is going, but this, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out today. I thought I would have seen more. I would have thought I would have seen more today. So 
Uh, Tim said, I feel like the offensive preseason is is not a real offense. Sirianni acting like a rookie coach. It's not. The first team wasn't our offense, guys. I mean, it was it was that bad. You had Toth. You had Matt Pryor. I mean, Jack Driscoll, they moved him to guard at one point. Why are you moving Jack Driscoll to guard? He's a right tackle. Herbig was the only guy. But Herbig wasn't playing guard. He was playing center and didn't play well. Um, obviously, the snap was our, you know, it's just Matt Pryor got a couple penalties. It just, it didn't look good. It was bad. It was just bad all around. Rodriguez have hurts is it named to start the flag of performance. I think the Eagles never pan, plan to have him start and will trade him. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm not going to jump to conclusion and say like, well, now since we know that he was at the hospital, okay, I, I understand. Like, I had no problem with Jalen Hurts not playing today. If it was for – he went to the hospital and it was that serious to where he got cleared from the hospital, he's fine. I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy. Like, I, I cannot I, – I can't be mad at that. Like – People go to the hospital. People, things happen. You know what I mean? So I can't get mad at that. I mean, he went to the hospital. How, how could I be that cold and, and be like, oh, he should have still played? I, I can't. I can't do that. I can't say that. But this is it's it's unacceptable. It's really unacceptable to, 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 to have this plan tonight, because if, if I, I swear it. Guys, it, it, was it really true that Nick said at his press conference that because Hertz wasn't playing, he didn't start his all O line because of that reason? That's, I mean, that shows that he is starting because obviously he doesn't want guys to get injured and not be available for Jalen Hurts by the first game. But it's going to make absolutely no sense if you start guys next week against the Jets. It's going to make no sense. Period. And then what's going to happen is. The Jets aren't going if to, if they start the starters against the Jets, the Jets are going to have nobody playing because it's their last preseason game. Okay, we're going to look good, get overhyped about it for no reason. Okay, get that straight. It, it just makes no sense to me. Rich says, I have no more alcohol left in the homestead. I have to deal with this horrible loss while the bus is wearing off. Uh, I drip says, tight ends are Ertz, are Ertz, Goddard, and Tyree Jackson. Well, Tyree's hurt, so no, it's going to be Richard Rodgers. It's going to be Ertz, Goddard, and Richard Rodgers. If Ertz doesn't get traded, if nothing happens, then you're going to have three tight ends on your roster as of right now. Comment stars, the Patriots are going to be pretty good this year based on their current roster. I don't know. Against against what they played today, I don't think so. I think the Bills are the Bills are a Super Bowl contender this year. Miami is definitely not doing much of anything. Okay, and the Jets... They have to kind of find their identity this year with the new quarterback and Zach Wilson. So I really don't know if the Patriots are actually that good playing against how bad we played today. Okay, let's get that straight. Money making dollars is exactly, Joe. That's been my point. This is just un unreal. Jeff Murray, the Patriots play against our backups. Wow, who cares? Uh, exactly. It, it is, but you have to... I, I am saying who cares, but at the same time, this was a horrible plan by Nick Sirianni tonight. Because I really, at this point, like, you're really going to play starters against the Jets next week when the Jets are probably not going to play any of their starters next week. It, it really just makes no sense. Tonight was the night they should have they did something. The night was the night they should have had starters in, but that didn't happen. Didn't happen. If I even hear that Jalen Hurts was out and, they, and Nick Sirianni said, oh, since Hurts is out, since Hurts is out, I'm just not going to start the offensive line. That that's ridiculous. That's that's I don't know what that I don't even know what that is. Like what what does that mean? So what? What does that mean? Because Hurts doesn't play, it means that these other guys don't need any work. At least this was a dress rehearsal game for the Philadelphia Eagles, and you don't put in. Okay, okay, you don't want to start your offensive line. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. But when you don't start your defensive line, you don't start your corners, you you depleted your whole team today except your wide receivers, your running backs, and the rest of your quarterbacks. Kavon Wallace has a, another groin injury again. He just got off of this groin injury, just got a groin injury again. Really? What if you're if you're going to sit your offensive line? Then why'd you sit out your defensive line? Why'd you sit out your corners? Why'd you sit out everybody? Everybody. What kind of look are you going to get? Thirty-five to nothing. What did you expect out of this game? 
I at least expected us to go up and score something at some point. But as soon, I think not, Hurts not playing did hurt a little bit because then you had to play Joe Flacco for a whole half. And then you know you're going to get Nick Mullins for, for two more quarters for the second half, which did not help this team whatsoever, period. So what, what, is, what is the answer to this? I'm I'm so I I shouldn't be this mad because it's preseason, but at the same time, Nick just totally just irked me today from what he just did today. These fans paying money to go to a preseason game, clickbait in this preseason game, like they're all the stars are playing this week, and then this happens because Hertz isn't playing. This happens because Hertz Hertz isn't playing today. I haven't been this mad in a while, but that irks me because I'm telling you right now, it's going to make no sense to start them against the Jets next week. What type of work are you getting next week? Unless the Jets are keeping their starters in next week, I highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. So that's really what I got to say about it. And I can go on for hours. Trust me, I go on for hours. There's 210 people in the chat. Appreciate everybody here today. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, we cover the Eagles all year long. Um, doing our post-game stream right now. Guys haven't liked the stream, like the stream up. Do appreciate it. Thank you for whoever was joining uh, the live play-by-play -play reaction before. Much appreciated. Like the stream up if you have not. It does help the channel out a long way. So do appreciate that. Uh, we're doing the Philly Shakedown Podcast with Philly 500 on Saturday. It's going to be a heated discussion this week. It's going to be a real heated battle this week. Okay, not a battle, but it, it's going to be, it's it's annoying. It's really annoying. So much love to everybody that's in here. Like, subscribe, do appreciate everybody that's coming in. Much love to everybody. Derek Williams says, and Wallace talking is where you at? <laughs> Richie says, anyone questioning Sirianna or are we or, or, or exaggerating? I don't think it's over. It's really not him as a coach that I'm questioning. It's him as a decision maker of why did you, because Hertz wasn't playing, you benched your offensive line. Why did you do that? What was the point of that tonight? Okay, so if you bench Hertz, okay. I mean, if, if Hertz is in the hospital, okay. If you want to bench your offensive line, okay, whatever. Don't know the reason why, but okay. But why is your defensive line benched? Why are your starting corners benched? What do we have to work with for good looks for players? We have no looks at all, period. E. Cosmo says, I agree with you. If, you, if I see injuries in the first game going ham, I'm, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be mad. If you... Th th that's why having three preseason games was perfect with this new rule because now you can rest your guys after the second game. If your dress rehearsal is the second game, which was supposed to be tonight, okay, which was supposed to be tonight, then you have more weeks to rest these players so they don't have to play against the Jets. But because you didn't start them today, Okay, because you didn't do that today. Now we're going to be questioning the whole week next week. Are the starters actually playing? And if I'm the Jets and I played all my starters this week for the second preseason game, why would the Jets start their starters against us next week? So is it real good reps? No. If you're going to start your starters next week against the Jets... If you're going to start your starters against the Jets and they have no starters in and we're going to look all good and dandy, what kind of good reps is that? Are those really good reps? Next week, you should have had your team play tonight. Jalen Hurts are no Jalen Hurts. They should have played tonight. That's my, that's my, that's my problem as of right now. Okay, that's my problem that I'm having tonight. Sorry, I'm trying to go through this chat. We got a super chat from Turntable Teddy. Appreciate it, man. It says, this game was all about who wants to get cut the most. Sirianni going to have the fan base turn on him quick if he makes baffling decisions like this during the season. This was prime reps for the Eagles tonight. It was prime reps. I, I, I'm trying to relax, guys, but it's tough. It's tough because... Like, I, look, 
I'll go as far as this, okay? I'll go as far as this. If the Eagles said, hey, Jalen Hurts isn't playing, okay, fine. Don't start your offensive line, that's fine. We'll bench the offensive line. But you bench the defensive line, you bench your cornerbacks. What? Why bench the? What's? Why bench the defense on top of it? What's the? Why? Why bench the defense on top of it? To me, it makes absolutely no sense. Why you did that? I, I'm just trying to figure it out here. I'm just trying to figure this whole thing out because it just makes it makes absolutely no sense to me why they did this. It makes no sense why they did this. Period. I don't because Jalen Hurts was in the hospital. Okay, and and what's your point? I need to hear the point of this whole story. Why? So it, it makes absolutely no sense to me at all. Alex says you don't want the vet O line getting hurt in a game without Hurts. It's it's stupid to play. Yeah, but at the same time, you're getting valuable reps. Like you're supposed. What are you supposed to do? They're supposed to get a series for the first preseason game, and then you bench them until the first game of the season. And you're just going to trust in our practice. And you're going to trust in they're getting they're being physical at practice. You can't be that cautious. The guys need to work together. The guys need work together. Their quarterback and their offensive line need work together. And if Hurts isn't in the game, then I'm not saying they should have played them for a quarter at least. If Hurts was out, play them for a couple series. I would have at least been a little happy with that. I would have been I would have been totally happy with it, but at least at least he was trying to at least get some guys in the game. But what's the excuse for benching our defensive line and our cornerbacks? You're down to Zach McPherson, Josiah Scott, and Avante Mack. I don't even think Avante Max even played today. Okay. Zach McPherson got a lot of reps. He didn't look fantastic. He did, Zach McPherson looked horrible. He looked horrible today. If that would have been four receptions for I don't know how many yards, probably over 100, 130 yards today, at least at that point. Maybe, I don't know. Just depends. Could have been 100 yards. I don't know. I wasn't keeping count of, of how many receptions he was giving up. Three, four, then the kill Harry drop, and he ended up getting hurt before he hit the ground. So that probably wouldn't have been a reception if he was obviously, you know, not hurt. So it, it's just a, it's a huge headache. It's just a, it's a huge headache what they did. I, I don't get what they did today. I, I don't know what – I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I really don't know what they did today. So – Matt says, uh, no feast with Pete. Uh, we do not need to let the young bucks shine. Done with picking up veteran wide receivers. No. Why would we even waste our time with that? Why are we wasting our time with that? Top notch bar says, man, you're over exaggerating. I'm not. I don't think I'm over exaggerating at all. Period. I don't because you're you're telling me that you start guys for the first game for a couple series barely hurts. Bar- I mean, hurt, look, hurts went to the hospital. I don't care. It, you know, he went to the hospital. I'm not going to be a cold person to say he should have played like because. I would I respect that. You know, something's wrong with his body, he needs to go to the hospital, it's an emergency. Let him go to the hospital. It is what it is. Like but you're gonna sit them out for this long? Are they gonna start them against the Jets? It just makes no sense. Why would you start them against the Jets? The Jets are gonna have no starters. The Jets are gonna play their backups. We're gonna probably win that game if we have our starters out. So at this point, it makes no. It, it's to have three preseason games. You have more rest. So if you played all these guys tonight, you'd have more rest. If they played all the guys tonight and I felt good about it, fine. Then you play them to you played them tonight, and then you let them rest for the next few weeks. Totally fine. But because you didn't play them, I better not see any injuries that first game. I'm telling you right now. I better see a a hundred percent healthy. I better see an offense that's ready by week one. I better see something. I better see something. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping I see something because I'm telling you right now, I don't want to see any hiccups by the first game of the season. That's all I gotta say about it. Really, at the end of the day, that's really all I gotta say about it. It's not doesn't sit with it doesn't sit with me right, but hold on. We we have a super chat from Richie MC says Eagles Jets in twenty seventh, which means sixteen days. By the way, so two weeks. So they got two weeks. That's the extra rest they would have if they put guys in the game today. 
Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't need to practice. Maybe maybe they don't need to be in a game. Maybe they're perfect right now. I don't know. Maybe they know some that we don't. I don't know. It seems like the players were totally fine on the sideline today. They weren't complaining about it. It seemed like it was all fine. They were in pads today. They were obviously they obviously were supposed to play because they were all in pads. Obviously, today. I saw Kelsey and a few other guys. Everybody was in pads today. So, uh, Morgan Spikes as well. For me, I think that Nick uh, making these mistakes now as a rookie would be better than him doing it in the season. I think someone let him know that wasn't smart. I mean, obviously, he's he's gonna he's gonna make the the call, but I mean, the front office has got to be like, okay, well, is this a good decision or a bad decision? I don't I don't know. I don't know if it's it's either this decision is gonna make us better or the decision is gonna really make us worse. I don't know. I hope it's I hope it doesn't make us worse. That's all. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Jeb Mertz said, who impressed you? Who disappointed you? Impressed me, Jack Stahl, Elijah Holyfield, uh, Kenneth Gainwell, Miles Sanders had a good a good a couple runs. Um, Alex Singleton with six tackles. TJ Edwards with a hard hit. Um, linebackers look good. I mean, uh, I mean, Milton Williams had two holding penalties on him, which was great. I mean, he would have sacked back Jones if he wasn't held. I thought he played good. I mean, really, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know what I mean? I thought a couple of running backs, a couple of tight ends, you know, the linebackers, Milton Williams, it wasn't much. There wasn't much to brag about. Devonta Smith looks good. He looks good when he's in open field. You know, you know, I saw Joe Flacco throw two okay passes. One pass was really good where he had close to that first down. I mean, he caught the ball. He had to come back for the ball and then go back in to get some extra yards. I thought his route running is fantastic. I thought he looked pretty good for his first. I mean, he had more snaps than I thought he was going to get tonight that's definite I thought he was gonna have more you know, I, I didn't think he was gonna get this many snaps at all period but it looked really good I had to, I couldn't complain about it. I thought he looked really really good um but there was a lot of passes because of protection issues and the more that Joe Flacco gets hit the more he's gonna think he's gonna get hit so he's gonna hike the ball and he's gonna start to panic a little bit and that's what he did some passes looked ugly because Pressure was bad, and, you know, he's just going to throw passes out of quickness and just out of, you know, he's panicking, and, and you know, that's that he's not comfortable. He's not comfortable in the pocket. Matt Pryor gave up two sacks today. Matt Pryor did a horrible job with the offensive. The whole offensive line played horrible. I mean, bad. Besides, you know, Nate Herbig playing center with the snap that, you know, in the beginning with Joe Flacco, the snap was over his head 10 feet. I mean, really, other than that, I mean, it was, you know, it, it wasn't good. You know, what do you have behind your starting cornerbacks? Uh, you have Zach McPherson. Okay, what do you have behind that? And he played horrible. What do you have behind that? Monte Max didn't play. Oh, uh, Josea Scott. And then you had the cornerbacks and, you know, what did you, Kevon Seymour, I don't know if he, he even played tonight. Uh, you know, uh, you had Hill. So many, these guys aren't going to make the team, obviously. They're going to get cut. I mean, that's obvious. Okay, Elijah uh, Elijah Riley, another guy from Army. He came from Army and uh, trying out for the team. He's not going to do much. Uh, that's it. Zach McPherson, I don't want him to turn to just a good red zone corner. He had that one deflection in the end zone, you know, uh, you know, for the touchdown, you know. But really, other than that, I don't want another Jalen Mills here. A guy that's just good in red zone but can't really do much. I mean, I'd probably say Jalen Mills is probably better than Zach right now. I don't know. But Zach just looked, you know, he got burned. He got beat, you know, four times. And probably would have been for more more yards if Nikhil Carey caught that, caught that ball. So it, it's just, it's unfortunate. Uh, Kyle says, hey, Joey, Kenny Gainwell looked really good tonight, uh, as did Singleton. Very excited for the for the, uh, those guys. No, definitely. Kenneth Gainwell's got wide receiver hands. I call him a dual threat back because he can go out as a, go out as a receiver. I mean, Memphis really does a good job at running backs. You take their, uh, Daryl Henderson as well from Memphis, uh, has, 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 has played pretty well. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot more going on with these running backs. I think Elijah Holyfield is definitely someone that could be another bruiser back for the Philadelphia Eagles if they want to keep two of those guys and Jordan Howard and him. I thought he did fantastic he was really upset at himself when he wasn't getting yards like the offensive line was not blocking until those two plays he stretched it out to the outside he looked he looked really good I have to say like Elijah Holyfield had a really good like two weeks of camp last year which much not of an offseason we had last year but I thought he looked really good I thought he, he brought some good things to the table 
Got nasty beats with the super chat. Appreciate Corden Sierra and post game. Those joint practices are like games. I assume no stars play versus Jets based on that. And and then you're probably right. I don't expect if he didn't start anybody now. I don't think he's starting people next week. I don't think it's happening. I really don't. Um, I th- I thought they they dominated the Patriots. They dominated during those joint practices. They did. They dominated. The credibility goes to the Eagles for what they did. I mean, Nelson Aguilar and Nikhil Harry couldn't do anything. I mean, even at the point of Cam Newton couldn't even do anything. He was checking down everything at practice. So as of right now, I think I don't think anyone's playing next week. I think you're right. Beats, I think you're perfectly right about that. I It makes no sense. If he benched him now, why would he wait till next week to start him again? It makes absolutely no sense as of right now. So uh, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. There's 198 people in the chat, guys. Appreciate everybody being here. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. If you guys haven't, um, hit the like button to the stream. Hit the like button. It it does come a long way to support, and uh, it's much appreciated by everybody. Um, Much love to everybody that's in the chat today. Um, I know it's been a rough day, 35-0. I know it's been a a very, very rough day today. Um, I feel bad for the people that went to the game today. I had to witness that, whatever, what we watched today. Um, Just crazy. Richie said uh, Singleton got winded. Yeah, Singleton was like, he was like patting his helmet. He was like, I need to get out of the game. And he he did it as much as he possibly could. I could not, I, I had nothing against. Singleton was done. After this, at least four tackles he had, he made six. After four tackles he made, I was like, he's got to get out of the game. Give someone else a shot. So, um, Alex says most of the game was third to fifth stringers. That's That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's why we played bad. And then people are saying, well, our fourth and fifth stringers should play well. Well, are they not getting coached right? I understand that. They should have at least scored a touch. They just look so gassed and horrible. I mean, they, that defense was so tired out. That run game was was messing us up badly. I mean, it, it got worse. It got worse over time. So, um, Eric Robert says, uh, McPherson is too slow. He honestly looks slower. That He looks very – he did. Like, I, I mean – Here's what was really confusing me. When we were playing zone today, it's like the corners would see a receiver come up to them. They would tap them, and then the receiver would just move. They were hitting into the middle of the field. I don't know what they were aiming at, but they were finding every empty space with this zone coverage. But these guys aren't good. These guys can't stay on their on their guys. I mean, they were barely playing man. So, they, I mean, I think playing zone, you'll get more out of what your guys could do and see how they react to the system you're putting out there. But at the same time, I want to see what they're doing man-to-man as well, which we did see. And, you know, our corner, every, everything behind Darius Slay and Steven Nelson cornerback-wise is completely horrible. Zach McPherson, not ready. Fourth-round pick. I understand that. Needs... Maybe he could be more of a backup type, you know, corner. Maybe he's better. He's obviously your fourth round picks in drafts are more of your role players for a scheme. I mean, he's not getting cut, obviously, because it's his first year and he's a fourth round pick. And I, I think he's the best out of Elijah Riley and uh, Kevon Seymour and some of these other guys. Sure. And Josea Scott and some of these other guys. Sure. But it's not saying that much as of right now. So I wouldn't go crazy with it, but I'm not happy about it. Commissars, I always have have said Holyfield was better than Howard. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I want to see if he is. I don't think we've seen if he is yet. I think that's the problem, too. Holyfield's got a lot of power. You see when he was getting to the sideline, he was running to the sideline, and he was like, you know what, I'm not going to get hit out of bounds. And he saw the guy coming at him, and he went towards him. You know, Holyfield went towards him. He loves to do that, and he just pops him real quick. Nice little pop. And I love that. I thought it was fantastic. So... I thought it was great. Oh, what a day, guys. What a night. Richie says, 16 days from the Jets till the opening game is a foul because way too much rest if they do not play any time in the Jets game. Season should have started the first week of September. I don't see what, like, the, now they're, they're going to rest them for three weeks. They're going to rest them for three weeks. So hopefully, you know, they're set on what they need to do. They have their offense. They're set. They don't need to see any more. I mean, we didn't see enough of these starters. Even, I think... They probably use this joint practice as more of a game than they did these preseason games. I mean, that's what it seems like. But as of right now, there's just more to say. Uh, Big D said, I chose to watch Old School Wrestling Shooter instead. So we'll see if interview. Um, Tech Sex says, Memphis also had Antonio Gibson, which is crazy. Um, good threat, can do anything you want in a running back. Memphis produces very good running backs. Uh, Money Man Dollars, I had I had to watch that game with a coworker who was a Calgary fan. He kept looking at me, calling out, score every single time, preseason or not. Backups still need to play as good as starters. I was embarrassed. Yeah, but backups, we didn't see backups the whole time. Besides, 
McPherson and some of the other guys, like we had third, fourth stringers that are never going to play that played in this game today. So what you see in the second half was not what you're going to see on the field this year. Okay, you're going to have backups to an extent. Backups play in games, but I'm talking backups to an extent, guys. I'm not talking third stringers. I'm not talking fourth stringers. It's to an extent. Okay, that's where people take it over the top with it. Like our backups play horrible. Yeah, but which backups are you talking about? You're talking about actual backups to starters. You're talking about third, fourth stringers. That's where it's different. Stowe Cowboy says, what's your thoughts on Smith? I, I don't like him at all. Studwood, I, I really don't like him. He's he, he's bad at tackling. He he's bad at at, at, at blitzing. He 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 stutter steps a little bit. He kind of he doesn't just go for where he's going. He doesn't take great angles. He his stutter stepping is what kind of it kind of kills me a little bit because he doesn't know what to do. I feel like he he waits way too long before he actually goes after somebody. I'm not big on Smith. Um, he's definitely getting cut most likely. So, Jacket, everyone smash the like button and make Joey happy. <laughs> Hey, hey, look, I, if people want to press the like button, that's great. If not, it is what it is. Look, I'm here to talk about the Eagles. I'm here to just do my thing and, and just enjoy football or try to enjoy it. And that's it. I love this team. I have passion for this game. And, and obviously, I played it for I played it for a long time. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, we just have it's this is what you go through. You have to go through see you have to go through off seasons like this or preseasons that look good or look ugly. Last week we had a nice preseason. Still lost, but that loss was still a win in our eyes because we saw development with some of these guys last week. I think the draft picks are really good, but unfortunately besides McPherson really, but other than that, you know, and maybe Patrick, you know, Patrick Johnson I mean, really, other than that, if you hit on at least three players from that draft, you're set. I think you've hit on Kenneth Gainwell, Devont, uh, Devontae Smith. I think Land Dickerson's going to be a really good player next year. I think he's going to be a fantastic player next year. So, uh, Alex says, Singleton just came back from COVID last week. Uh, Jez Davis says, Joey, last week I was sick uh, with a stomach four to five days. Maybe that's what, what hurts, Scott. I mean, it could, but I'm glad you're better, and I'm glad he's doing well. I mean, if he's got to go to the hospital, guys, I don't care. He doesn't have to. If he has to be out like two weeks because of his stomach, I he could be out for two weeks. I don't care. Like health comes first before anything I, about a football game, about anything. It, it does not matter. Um, Jason Brown says, get rid of Mullins and Flacco. They both will absolutely try. I wouldn't even say that. Like Flacco was playing scared after he was hit a couple times like as soon as you're off they would the same thing would happen to hurts the same thing happened to hurts last year the offensive line was hurt he started getting pressured too much he started running he got sacked a bunch of times that's that that's what's going to happen you know Flacco only has so much control like he gets the ball in his hands and like if he's got no he's got to set his feet and throw the ball it, it's not a quick thing like he threw those quick passes those quick little five yard passes that was all we can get out of him really he threw that deep one to Devontae Smith which the timing was off because he was getting pressured he, and that ball should have been thrown a little bit later than that but it is what it is Alex says anybody mentioned preseason doesn't matter um uh, John Kelly says Siri didn't eat his gabagoo <laughs> tonight. Alex says Singleton hopefully will have his conditioning up uh, the first game. T.Y. Eagle says Flacco is booty doo. Robert Gravino says 198 likes. Guys, if I get two, over 200 likes, I'll be I'll definitely be a lot more happier. Uh, but uh, you guys were such a support in that stream before. I mean, there was a lot of a lot of fighting going on, but I did appreciate uh, everybody. Did appreciate it. Ultimate uh, Roy says Milton Williams was bad. He wasn't bad at all, at all, period. I love when people say he was bad, but don't give me a reason. So, obviously, people really haven't been watching the game. 1437 says preseason batters. I bet we lose three straight, and that's fine. I mean, we were with Chip Kelly in 2015, and we won all our preseason games, and we thought we were preseason Super Bowl champions. So, uh, how did Teron Jackson look? Not much today. Didn't see much. They were moving him from defensive tackle. They're moving him from defensive end to defensive tackle. So now they're starting to, they're moving him around. They're moving Milton Williams around from defensive tackle to defensive end, which he could play both positions very well. Um, but they're moving Teron Jackson inside as well. So it didn't really, didn't really do much today. I think he had a better, a better game last week. Obviously when he's playing next to, you know, better players, he plays better, uh, but it really, it's all that matters. 
Jaden Brown's like, can we redraft? We needed a whole new team, guys. We drafted because they were supposed to be good. Absolute. Uh, that, that's 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 a dumb statement, but it's okay, though. Because having an imperfect preseason is not bad at all. Having a perfect preseason is bad more often, and I think that's true 100%. When your preseason is too good, you can't. I mean, look, I, I you know, obviously, if the preseason was too good, I bet you a hundred of you would be jumping up and say, "Oh my god!" And, and trust me, I would be happy too. But I only point out the players that we drafted. I point out the players that really did above and beyond in certain preseason games. You know, I mean, like, what are you facing on that team? Are you facing starters? Are you facing backups? Are you facing third, fourth stringers? You don't know. So, Fly Eagles Five P says, "Let's put all the Eagles YouTuber uh, YouTubers on the field and let's see if we would <laughs> score." I, I don't know. I, I probably don't have it anymore. I used to, but not not anymore. Uh, for one, four, three, seven, base hit. Then if we lose to Atlanta, that's four straight L's. Then then what? Then then I guess we. Then I guess they haven't been coaching right. Then if we lose four straight games, if that's that's the case, then well, it would be three straight. It wouldn't be four because, well, it would be three straight. Technically, because we lose today, we lose against the Jets if that happens, and losing against Atlanta, that's three games. That's losing three straight, pretty much. Uh, Joe Velasquez says, Alex Singleton is a star. I, I believe it. I believe it. Uh, he showed it today. He's all over the field. Because uh, uh, Cassius Sedan says, hey, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt without Jalen. <laughs> Yeah, it, it did because um, we didn't know because right, right before I think right in the warm ups he was dancing he was doing all this stuff and then all of a sudden like he was gone and then I you know I'm like why what what happened did something happen that, that we don't know of I I don't um, so I, I don't know. Robert says our Robert says our corners were very bad in zone tonight they were horrible in zone they were bad really beyond bad Zach McPherson and beyond that was horrible. The rest of our depth at corner is bad. Thank God we signed Steven Nelson. And really, it's not saying a whole lot. Steven Nelson ain't locked down. Steven Nelson is a good quality in this prime corner that can handle his own. I'm good with Steven Nelson. Do I think he's anything crazy? No, but I think the best coverage was a corner that we did get in free agency was him. He was a free agent before the draft, so obviously it was a long process to acquire him. That's why the Land Diggerson pick in the second round, like I love Land Diggerson, but at the time I just didn't think it was it was more of a futuristic pick than it is a pick to start. Your second round pick should start on the field right now. You could have gotten a Sante Samuel Jr., which has had a really good camp. Okay, you could have had a JOK that has had a really good couple preseason games as of right now. Uh, even last week, so Alex says McPherson isn't slow. His testing numbers are similar or better than uh, Darius White. We need to we need to calm down. I mean that's I mean uh, he didn't play well. I mean that's bad. I mean that's almost four receptions. That I mean that's that's uh, calm down. Like it's right in front of us. He didn't play well. I mean we saw it. He didn't play well. He he got beat on the top of the route. He got beat. He got separate. He had he had separate. There, there, there was separation. I mean. Uh, it's when you're a cornerback, it's easy to see it. It's easy to see who's getting beat at cornerback. He had no, I mean, he can't, he didn't handle it. He didn't do the right thing today. He didn't play well today. John Kelly said, let's go get CJ Henderson. Well, obviously the Eagles have some cap space, but I, I don't know if, you know, that's really going to make a difference right now. I'm trying to get through all these as, as fast as I possibly can, guys. I'm sorry. King James says, uh, so, uh, so salute to you, Joey, for still holding it down for your live, for the viewers. Uh, like it, sub, because uh, King James said so. Appreciate King James. Much love, man. Much love, dude. Alex is also his own coverage is something that needs communication. It takes time. Oh, yeah, no, I because this team is, we we were, really weren't a team that played a lot, of, a lot of zone, especially a zone first team, but I know that Jonathan Gannon is going to change the fronts. We're going to play a 4-3. We're going to play a 3-4. We're going to be using a lot of linebackers in our schemes. So, it, it, yeah, it takes a lot of communication, but obviously you have, like, who's making the calls, what's going on, and see what's happening. So, Nasty Beats, it could be a blessing to have a game like this, possibly a nice wake-up call to the staff and players. Don't matter how dominant you are in practice, it doesn't matter. It doesn't when you're fa- especially. I think the joint practices showed a lot more. I don't think the joint practices are a waste. They're definitely not because it's most likely it's mostly a game when you're you know and it and it gets the juices flowing with the players and you're playing against your own guys. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more to it than, you know, when you're facing your own team every day, you know how players react to things. You know the, the routes that they do. You know how they run, how they cover. You know how they do things. But when you bring another jersey, you bring in another team into your camp, it really amplifies what you're doing as a team. You know what I mean? So, uh, 505, PJ5, all my Eagles fans, relax. Take one day at a time and get ready for the opener. I'm, I'm pumped for it. I'm pumped for the opener. I'm nervous, and obviously it's it's normal to be nervous for games like that. I'm going to be nervous for that for that season opener. It's it's going to be 
I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be really nervous because I, I hope they're doing the right thing. I hope they did the right thing tonight. That's all I got to say. I hope they, I hope they did the right thing tonight. That's all I got to say about it. Alex says, and uh, if you have to pass rush, which we didn't, zone coverage will get eaten alive. Yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. And, you know, I, there was a couple blitzes, too. They put in a little bit of blitz today. They didn't put in any blitz last week against Steelers. So I'm uh, hoping to see more of that. And, uh, you know, next week is just another preseason game. So uh, just to see what happens. Uh, one above all says Holyfield is bad and, and pass protection. Yeah, no, he had a – that was that was one. He picked up that blitz, and it was bad, or at least – Someone getting through the line, he couldn't pick it up. It, it was bad. Jordan Howard is the best at that. That's where Holyfield is not going to be better than Jordan Howard when it comes to the pass protection. So, and picking up those blitzes, that's where it's going to make a huge difference. Alex says Holyfield probably won't even be on the practice squad. I think he will. I think he will. I mean, he might, if he goes to the practice squad, he might go to another team. It might happen. It depends if someone's going to pick him up. He's on practice squad, someone's going to pick him up. Could happen. As his says, all the Eagles did was ran the same play like they did at the joint practice. One regular season start, the playbook will open up. I, I think so. They're, they're not gonna they're not gonna put too much into the playbook as of right now. They're not gonna put too much into it. I think there's gonna be a lot more to the playbook once the season. They're not gonna give away everything in in what they're doing. Obviously, when the when the media is not on the field, they're doing their plays. They're, they're practicing what they have to do to get prepared for games. But at the same time, I think you really have to look at it this way. You know. Nick Sirianni has an upper hand this year because he is a new head coach. There's no blueprint on Nick Sirianni. What he shows in preseason is really all the tape that Atlanta really has right now. So Nick has a Nick has the upper hand right now, and I think that you know with the with the Falcons too because they have a new head coach as well. So I guess there is some type of you know on both sides they have more of an advantage for that reason. So that's definite. Uh, John Kelly said, "Did Huntley play? I didn't see Jason Huntley play at all today." Unless he was on special teams, I didn't know about it. I did not see him at all. 228 people in the chat. Appreciate everybody being here. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We cover the Eagles all year round. We're covering this game. We got blown out today, but hey, we're all going to talk about it together, and I appreciate everybody being here. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Like the stream if you guys haven't. Much appreciated. If we get this to 300 likes, that'd be awesome. Uh, get a new new milestone for the channel. 300 likes on a video. I think I've done it before a good amount of times, but hey, I know the time won't matter, right? So uh, much appreciate everybody that joined me on the live play-by-play. And then obviously it's the Philly Shakedown podcast on my channel this Saturday with Philly 500 should be exciting and uh, it's uh, it's gonna have a lot to talk about here uh, Dante Fitch says I was at the game and McPherson didn't look bad until the D-line couldn't get any pressure and he had to start chasing uh, people here around all, all night and, and that's and you know that's where it comes into the the pressure and obviously the coverage comes hand in hand you have good pressure you know your corners can make big plays or obviously the defensive line can make you know something happen in the backfield if you have good coverage and no pass rush I mean you you know it depends um we had we didn't the pressure was not good second third fourth quarter it just wasn't good not even a sack uh today so it's really showing, you know, our third, fourth stringers is really not guys. You know, uh, uh, Bailey didn't play well. Ridgeway didn't play well. You know, Ridgeway's been hurt every single year. We keep signing him to one-year deals, and he's still not doing anything. I think if, he, if he's healthy, he plays well, but um, nothing from him today. Teron Jackson, nothing from him today. Milton Williams is probably the only guy that really did anything today. I mean, and that's him by himself, guys. That's why it's like, well, he didn't do anything. He's horrible. Well, he caused two holding calls on him. One for would have been a sack on Mac Jones. 100%. So, crazy. Richie, uh, Richie FC says, Jeffrey Lurie's team stole money from the fans. That's what it seems like. Weezy the Dread Eagle, what's going on? Man? So, uh, I don't know. Jordan Harris, a couple thousand-yard seasons. Holyfield ain't better than Harris. I don't think, when it comes to pass protection, I don't think... I, I think overall Jordan Howard is a better bruiser back because he can, he brings more to the table than Elijah Holyfield does, but it doesn't mean that Elijah Holyfield is bad. I just think like Elijah Holyfield needs to work on his protection. Other than that, I think he's physical. I think he's got a little bit of elusiveness when he runs east and west, and I think you know someone coming coming towards him on the sideline, he's like, I'm not letting this guy push me out of the sideline until he clocks him. I love that. Matthew said, did Fulgham even play tonight? No, they sat him out. They played High Tower. Uh, they played High Tower. They played Devontae Smith. They played Quez Watkins. There was nothing there for any of the receivers. There was nothing there. Um, I didn't see Fulgham play today. Fulgham is going to be an interesting one because I don't know if he's making the team. I really don't know if he's even making the team. I don't know what's going on. JJ Ortega Whiteside, they didn't, I don't know if they even played him tonight either. So it's really weird. Today was a weird day for some of these guys. 
Um, as for a loyal apologist says, if as anyone cares what the Cowboy Bandwagon Nation thinks, uh, probably not. No, not likely. Wait, so can, can we get Ross Tucker to call our games? He's like a breath of fresh compared to the normal. And I put a direct. They give us so, so happy to finally see Holyfield. I was very happy to see Holyfield. It was fantastic. Alex said, Fogum had one target, zero catches. <laughs> he had one target today? He had one target. He was there today? I, I didn't even notice. Um, Rashad Smith wasn't making the team. Oh no, a lot of people aren't making the team. Uh, obviously, Nasty Beats says Howard has looked nice in preseason, no longer in his prime, but certainly better than the last few seasons. Look quicker. I, he's in a lot. He's in very good shape this year. Just remember, guys, this guy had a dry free agency. He had no interest. I mean, he signed that big deal. I know that back in 2019, after that season, Howard did not want to leave the Eagles. He wanted to stay here. He loved it, and. You know, we did a lot with him, put him in the passing game. I mean, we treated him with the Bears kind of straight away from, and he was more of a finisher with the Bears. Um, and ter- when Tariq Cohen came in as the running back for uh, the Chicago Bears, um, I thought they did fantastic. But he bulked up, lost some weight, bulked up this year. He's got a chip on his shoulder. His pass protection is fantastic. You saw from the last game, just putting someone right on their butt last week, which was great. And um, it was good, guys. It was good. Uh, life is for living. Twenty. Uh, Devontae looks looks smooth. Devontae looked very smooth today. For as much as he's played and no, barely any targets, he was targeted what two or three times today, about three times probably today. And then even that one catch when he caught when he, when he caught that in open space and he still found a way to get towards that first down marker. I mean, it was close to a first down. It was one yard short or an inch is short, but it, it looked really good when you use him the right way. That this is that this is what happens. But between the pressure. This offense, this second, barely second string, third string offensive line, plus Flacco having to run for his life and throwing that ball inaccurately because of it, that's what's going to happen. So, 1437 Bates says everybody played bad, uh, bad zero points. Robert Gravino says running back, wide receiver had start, had start. Yeah, we had starters out there, but if you have nothing in the trenches, you have no protection for your quarterback, your receivers are going to look horrible. Your quarterback is going to look horrible. Edward Chamberlain says, "You giving wrenches out? I'm giving rent. I'm giving wrenches out today. I already have a bunch of names. I've been writing names as I've been seeing the chats the past couple of days. More wrenches are coming out. Um, I'm not giving them during the stream. I'm doing it after. So wrenches are coming out. So I'm going to go to my list on YouTube Studio and and write in the names and make sure those people have wrenches. So I have more wrenches coming out next week. We'll have more wrenches next week for the Jets preseason. I don't know what we're doing." Might collab with Philly 500 on the next preseason game, so we might do something together just for the last game. So why not? Um, so we'll we'll figure it out. It's in the works, but we don't know yet. Tex X says, Joey, do you think Nick is trying to hide the playbook as a rookie? That could maybe be strategy because Siri is very smart. He will have to us be ready week one. He's not going to show his whole playbook in preseason. No coach is showing his whole playbook in preseason, okay? It's not happening. I saw a lot of the same plays from us, just like the Patriots. Saw a lot of check downs, saw a lot of the same plays from them. Run up the middle, run to the left, run to the right. Um, check downs to the running backs. I mean, it happened over and over again, so... Uh, John Kelly says Rashad Smith did a 10th round pick from the Home Depot. <laughs> the Home Depot. Our rock reveals Smith Rager uh, Watkins Ward. Smith Rager Watkins Ward. And obviously, John Hightower. And I don't know. John Hightower is going to be in the lineup this year. And Travis Fulgham, that's. That's what I'm looking for. Those are your five, if you're keeping five. If they want to use an extra roster spot for a six receiver, they could do that. I want to see what they use. Do you have two extra roster spots this year? I would honestly use one at running back this year. Why not have more running backs? I don't see why not. You know what I mean? King James says, could you imagine if we draft DK Jefferson and Smitty? Damn, how I hate, I hate him, but I, but, I, but I love him. But look, like, if you drafted, if, if you drafted DK, you wouldn't have Jefferson. It, it just... It, you had the old coaching staff. Do you think DK or, or just Justin Jefferson would have started for this team under Doug Peterson? Probably not. It's easy to say that now. Like you missed out on, you know, you drafted JJ Ortega Whiteside. You missed on on Terry McLaurin. You missed out on AJ Brown. You missed out on a lot of receivers. So um, there's a lot more to take out of it. 
Willie Jack says, should the Eagles draft a corner with one of the first round picks? I think they should go defense the first two picks next year. It's a defense heavy draft next year, whether it's pass rusher, whether it's corner. I think they need to address safety next year. Anthony Harris is on a one year deal. He's 30 years old. You got to do something. Kavon Wallace, if he keeps doing this, getting injured, or he's re- groin injuries are, are, you can't do anything with a groin injury. You literally just have to not do anything until it's better and hope that you're good after that. So you re injure your groin again. Uh, for in this offseason. So what do you do? I think you have to go after Stingley Jr. from LSU, top corner in the draft. I think there's four to five really good corners in this draft next year. Get a pass rusher. Get I, Linebacker, I think the linebacker position is going to be set. I really don't think you have to touch that. But they... If Steven Nelson has a one-year deal this year, he's got a one-year deal, so he could leave after this year. If Steven Nelson plays well, he might guarantee more money for another team next year. That might happen. And Darius Slay is only here... To, until throughout the 2022 season. That's it. After next year, Darius Slay is gone. Contract is done. They're not going to repay him. They're not going to give him another contract. Then you're down to square one with no corners. So if Steven Nelson leaves, then I could see them going after, obviously, depending on how much draft compensation we have, Carson Wentz, are we going to have two ones, two twos? Are we going to have three first-round picks? Then that's going to be a whole different story from what you're going to command. You can make a big trade. You could trade back and obviously get a first round pick for 2023 if you want. So there's a lot of different things they could do with their draft compensation. So whatever they do is what they do. Uh, Jock says, uh, Where was JJ at? There was four quarters in the game. I, I don't think he played. I didn't see him. 1437 says Jalen Hurts was literally dancing pregame, with, then illness. I mean, he, well, Nick said, apparently what Nick said is that he wasn't feeling good. Um, in warm-ups. He wasn't feeling good at all. He was starting not to feel good during warm-ups. And, and then before the game started, I guess it got worse, and he had to go to a hospital. So that's what happened. Craig Howie said, I wouldn't make too much of tonight's game. We still have the element of surprise. And I think there's more to it than what we've seen tonight. That's defin- definite. Philly for Life said, I've never been so disappointed. I'm disappointed on the decision-making for tonight. I'm not disappointed in the overall team of how we're going to play this season. It's really just the, just what they did tonight, which kind of really upset me. That's what really just, mm, it just really pissed me off. Really did. Um, Andrew Kriver says, uh, yeah, for sure. For some of them, 40 times this year had to be a, a little rigged. Rob Grizz said, one for three cent being, he was obviously doing a stanky leg and <laughs> got infected. Texas says, doesn't matter how bad McPherson is in the rookie year, you have to give him time to develop it with Jonathan Gannon. Can't help with it. No, I know that. I mean, you have to give him more time. I understand that you have to give Zach McPherson more time. I'm not, I'm not bashing him because he's a rookie. I'm just saying that he didn't play well. And that's it. He played and play well. And okay, that's what we've seen. And it's, it's noted now, <laughs> and that's it. You know what I mean? Alex says, you're disappointed in a preseason game full of mainly guys not making the team. No, it, it's it's like like I said, I'm disappointed we didn't really score. I'm kind of like, I, we should have scored something today. I mean, we couldn't get past the 50-yard line today. I mean, we just couldn't do anything today. Okay, it was just to the point where we just couldn't get anything done. Okay, I guess Jake Elliott didn't need the kick. I mean, he had an ankle injury, and Aaron Sippos, the punter, was going to kick today, and Zach Ertz was going to be the was going to hold the ball for field goals today. So I'm not disappointed at at, at mainly guys are going to get cut. I'm just getting disappointed at the decision making for this game, which ended up in the result of what happened today. That's what people do not get. Okay. Nasty Beats said they said folks the game that he had an abdominal pain prior to the game despite dancing around during warm said it was some sort of stomach bug infection. He's all good now. That's it. If I hear that, that's all I got to hear. And that's it. A guy needs to go to the hospital, I'm fine. I don't care if it was uh, the first game of the season. If Jalen Hurts had to go to the hospital, I can't be mad at it. How can I be mad at that? I'm not a cold-hearted person that's going to be like, oh, no, that's unacceptable. He's got to play. You know, like, that. well, that's, that's ridiculous. Colin Moore says, I remember when last game everyone was wanting Joe Flacco to be the starter. What happened? Did you guys come to realize he's terrible? I don't think I don't even think Joe Flacco is that bad. Like I think Joe Flacco he could take over a game for the Eagles if he had to, but as a whole season, definitely not. Jalen Hurts is the guy. Uh, Rich says Flacco uh, ran Rager into a possible concussion. Why did he tell Rager? And this is how Rager got hurt. You want to know how Rager got hurt three times last year? Twice he got hurt on two passes from Carson Wentz, which resulted in him catching the ball and running into somebody. That's the worst. You do not put your receiver in that position because that's how you get your guys hurt. That was bad. That was bad. Uh, John Jacobson Mullins is the reason I drink the rest. I live to forget what. 
Uh, Mark Thomas, it hurts. Uh, had bubble guts. Torterville, what's going on? Did Jalen step into a bad Slim Jim? <laughs> uh, one above all says Milton played fine. Uh, I don't know why people are saying he played horrible today. I thought he played good for what he did today. He had, I mean, there was two holding calls on him today, so obviously he's doing the right thing. He would have had a sack on Mac Jones today. A hundred percent would have had it. Uh, Carl Seduce is still staying positive on the season. Now, just imagine if Carson Wentz actually, just imagine if Carson Wentz played like he actually was healthy for preseason and he was playing well. I'm telling you right now, Eagle fans would go crazy. They would say, oh, bring Carson Wentz back. I'm telling you right now, that's what, what I'm telling you. Thank God, thank God he's not playing. It would, it, it, this fan base is just intoxicating. It, it is. It's, it's, it's just an intoxicating fan base. Mark Thomas and Michael Jackson was at the link tonight. <laughs> Um, Studwood Cowboys says, I can't believe Mullins looks so bad. He made plays in Frisco, but not so much in Philly. Disappointing. My, well, he didn't play well with the 49ers either. I mean, last year, Mullins got benched. When we played the 49ers, Mullins got benched. Like, he played bad. He threw up, uh, he literally threw a pick right to, uh, right into Alex Singleton's hands for a touchdown. He threw it right to, right to his gut. Um, and he got benched for CJ Beathard last year. And then we obviously came back and won that game, but, um, crazy. Alex says, Vermeer, Lions and Browns went undefeated in preseason and then went 0-16. It, it, it's just that we did it with Chip Kelly in 2015. 2015, we, were, we won all four games. Won, won that game against Green Bay, and we thought we were the, the bomb. We were going to get ready for the season. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, we're not giving away everything. We're not giving away all these plays. We're not giving – you think Nick, Nick Sirianni's not stupid, okay? He's not giving away all his plays. He's not giving away everything. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Uh, T.Y. Eagles fight. We went one and three. I think in preseason our Super Bowl year can't put too much stock in these games. Uh, Torville says Nate Herbig could be our backup long snapper. <laughs> Jay says people stop talking when they see the playbook open up. I love uh, what they that they think teams are going to use their full playbook in, in preseason, and they're not going to. They're not going to. I don't want them to. Uh, Ryan Wilder says, hi, bro. What's your thoughts on Zach, uh, Zach Wilson will do as the Jets? Oh, Zach Wilson will do as the Jets. Uh, Jets QB. I, I don't know why I said Zach. I read Zach. I don't know why. Um, Zach Wilson, I, I think he's good. I think they actually found their quarterback. I mean, better than Sam Darnold, definitely. I mean, Sam Darnold, I think, was, was inherited to that team. It didn't play well just because I just think that the, the coaching aspect was bad uh, when Darnold went there. But I think uh, Zach Wilson looks pretty promising. He's accurate. He's, he steps up in the pocket. He's got a strong arm. Um, his awareness is really good. Um, I, I'm actually kind of excited to see how the Jets do this year with a new quarterback like that. That seems like a very uh, uh, – people. it seems like they, they, the team wants to play for him. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the Jets do. Sean Kelly says, really wish – uh, we had land uh, diggers. Uh, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, uh, that's not going to happen probably till next year. And if we have injuries this year, you know, knock on wood with the offensive line. Um, I think at this point, I, I think you'll, I don't know if they would have, they would really put him there. I don't know if they would move him. Uh, if they would put him. I, I don't know if they would actually play him this year. I think obviously Nate Herbig would play before he did. Um, and, and would guard spots, whatever he's going to do. But I mean, we just got to see. Tony Scarra says this team will show no, uh, nothing until the season starts, and that's probably true. Um, SS Philly says Hertz will be the starter. Are they saving him for a regular season preseason? And then people tell me, like, well, they didn't name him the starting quarterback. Why didn't they name him the starting quarterback? And obviously I tell everybody, well, because they don't want any teams to know who's starting for the first week of the season. They want to keep these teams, you know, going through both quarterbacks, have to prepare for both quarterbacks, obviously, so they don't know who they're starting at this point. Rob Gravino says Zach Wilson looks like he's 15. He does. He looks pretty, he looks like he's really young. Um, uh, like he doesn't take too kindly to me putting links in the chats, probably because too many spammers do that. Uh, Craig Calloway said we'll win our first game regular season. Hurts, Quez, and Jalen will have an awesome year. Um, one four uh, three seven base of the Steelers. L. I just lost my spot. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not seeing these super chats coming up. I'm sorry, guys. If I'm missing super chats, I'm missing them. And they're not coming up. They're not even coming up on YouTube right now, which is weird. Comment star with the super chat says, people say Fulgham might get cut. That's a bad idea. I think it is. I think Fulgham needs to make this roster. Fulgham and Hightower need to make this roster. Those are your five. Those are your five receivers as of right now. With what you had on the field today, plus Fulgham, plus Hightower, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside gets cut because I just don't think he's going to do anything. He's been playing slot. He's been playing outside. 
I, I don't care where he's been playing. He's not going to do much for us. So, Derek Lewis says, but think, Joey, in 2019, we, if we had Met, Yeah, but just think, just think what Metcalf would have done with this coaching staff. Absolutely nothing. Probably nothing. Probably nothing. Now, probably would play better. As of 2019, probably not. For two years, he probably would have played horrible for us. Um, and that's just the truth to it. But it, it's over. Like, how many years are we going to talk about DK Metcalf and, and Justin Jefferson? I mean, it is what it is. It's over now. Uh, Biggie's Wallace is nothing but talk thus far. And, and that's that's truth. I mean, he made one good tackle in the backfield today for a loss. A nice, uh, nice physical tackle in the backfield for a two-yard loss today. I thought it looked pretty good. Mitch DYPC Eagles need to draft Derek Stingley. I I would love that. I would love it. Um, DR Jones, hell yeah. Commissar, I would love to see this game. It really tell, but the offensive lines were bad, but it makes sense why they were bad. There are a lot of QBs in this league that don't do well with the bad. No, because Joe Flacco is not mobile a little bit, barely. I would say he's not mobile at all whatsoever. I mean, he's as bad as Sam Bradford when it comes to pocket awareness. I mean, he can't do anything. He literally stands there. That's all he could do as of right now. That's just the truth of it all. Burke five one one three says, "Can I get a blue wrench? I'm I'm getting I'm getting to the wrenches after the stream. I'm gonna be putting. I'm not giving them manually on on the stream. I'm gonna give them out for my YouTube studio stuff, and I'm gonna type in names. I have a bunch of names written out. I'm gonna write in a few more right now. All right. So that's done. Just to make sure, I'm gonna be giving out wrenches, but I'm gonna be really careful doing it this time." Uh, one above all says the cornerback from Cincy looks really good. Uh, Big D says I think they'll draft defensive tackle first round corner second. I, I don't know. I don't know what the, the pet, we have to see what happens in the offseason first before the draft. We have to see free agency. We have to see what we get, what happens, how much cap space we have, the draft capital we have. I mean, I mean to, to skip to the draft right now, I mean, it's easy to say that we need something right now because of what we have right now. But we have to wait. We don't know if Steven Nelson's going to get resigned. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Anything could happen possible. Um, 24 James says, I'm in my opinion, the Eagles should draft the linebacker early next year. I would love that, but you know, the Eagles don't value linebackers so much early in the draft. And that's just the truth to it all. We got 225 people in the chat guys. Appreciate everybody being here tonight. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. If we cover the Eagles all year round, if you guys haven't checked out, uh, we just did the play by play reaction. We're going to be doing another one next week for the last week of preseason. We have the Philly shakedown podcast on Saturday at 9 PM Eastern. Definitely check that out on my channel this week. A lot to talk about. If you haven't hit the like button to the video, please hit like the stream up. I, I do really appreciate it. And you know, try subscribing. I mean, we cover the Eagles. We, you know, check out some some of the content if you guys have not but like the stream up guys much appreciated uh today and much love to everybody that watched the game with me before and people are in the stream right now so much love to everybody we got joseph heath with the super chat appreciate man's canon canon is just scaring me who's canon canon is scaring me who's canon I have no idea. Oh, Gannon is scaring me? Oh, why? Because of just, just how... The, yeah, I mean, the defense played horrible. I mean, they had three, f third, fourth string in the game with... <laughs> I mean, they couldn't defend anything. They played... They were in zone, but they just looked so... They played zone, but it just looked so like... They, like, just let the corner... They would, like, tap... They would tap a receiver going by them, and they would just, like, sit there. It, like, it looked so awkward. I don't know what happened. I really... I didn't know what happened at all. I was really confused. Richie said, stop asking for wrenches. <laughs> it's okay. People people like to ask. I, I don't mind it. It is what it is. Craig always says, how do you like the live chat? How do I like the live chat? That's great. I'm having a good time right now. It's all that matters. We're all having a good time on a bad night. Somewhat of a bad night. It is, it is. Breaking, what's going on, man? says, like the stream up. Please like the stream up. If we get this stream to 300 likes, be fantastic. Be awesome, guys. Um. He goes, Banks, Devonta Smith route running is crazy. That boy got, I know he does. I could see a glimpse of it, and I want to see more. That's why if we had the offensive line playing tonight, if the offensive line played tonight, I'd feel a little bit better. But because they didn't, the receivers didn't look as productive today. They did not. So that's why I'm aggravated today. Little bit. El Yipa, what's going on? So the Eagles will ball out during the regular season. Go Birds. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I can't wait to go to the opener of the week, too. I'm very. I'm gonna actually be doing a live stream at Lincoln Financial Field, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. A little bit of a vlog thing going on. It's gonna be a lot of fun. 
Alex says, Eagles don't value linebacker or safety early in the draft. Last time we valued safety 2010-2011 with Jarrett Allen in the second round, but that was probably more Reed's doing. Most likely, yes. Um, Hitman Sticks, what's going on, bro? So salute to Joey Fan Flagels Fly. Appreciate it, bro. Much love, dude. Much love. Big D says also did get help defense that they were likely on the field all game. And, and yeah, they were they were tired. Guys. And that's here's another problem. Because you didn't have your starters in, these other guys were gassed. These guys were gassed all game. They, I mean, the more they were getting first down, they were running the ball on us. They were doing check downs on us. They were getting a first down almost every single play. I mean, pretty much every completion, every run was a first down, mostly. I mean, it was quick. So there, there was really nothing much to... They were gassed. They were tired. The, the offense was off the field way too quick. And this is what happens when you don't have your offensive line playing for you today. You don't have your defensive line. You don't have your starting corners. Now your backups have to play more minutes. I mean, it's good for them. They probably want to play more, but they're going to be, if they're getting beat constantly all game, it's going to look bad. Matt says, I almost would want to open a bottle of Corona time. <laughs> Uh, Benji, I still can't wait till the season starts. Benji, I, I'll be excited too. I'm, I'm pumped for it. Tyler Hudson said the East will still get a first, second place when all starters are playing. We played second, third players, and it's unfortunate. I keep losing my spots. I don't know why this has happened. Three yard, they got to fix that. Chris Murray, what's going on? Don't want the lot, the old line to get hurt. No, I, I mean, I, I understand that. I understand that, but I'm not saying they had to play him for a quarter. At least if you played them a little bit, we can give more looks to Devontae Smith. We got no looks with Devontae Smith besides that one catch that he almost got a first down on, which he looked very smooth, silky smooth catching the ball and just, just, I mean, he's so quick and just, oh man, just imagine him in open space. Just imagine him in a regular offense with, just imagine him with the starters. This is going to be really exciting. King James III says, do you think Nick will use J.J. on this Alshon potential? And do you think Rager will be our, our gadget player? I think no. I think Rager will be a starter, a full-time starter. And I think J.J., no, I, I don't think so. I, Alshon Jeffrey every, Alshon Jeffrey now is better than J.J. John Hightower, that was hurt for the past couple weeks, has been better than J.J. being healthy. Okay, that that's how bad I think J.J. is at this point. Uh, Philly fan 11 says, love the positive vibe, Joey. Uh, hard to be that way when we have such a bad game. Props to you, sir. Hey, I appreciate it. No, I mean, look, I'm going to discuss the bad things that happened. But, you know, I took positives out of this game. It's not like I said this team ultimately played. I mean, we lost. I mean, it's really not about winning or losing. But when you, you know, 35 nothing, it kind of, you know, you're kind of like, okay, well, I don't mind losing in preseason. But if you lose that badly, then obviously something didn't work today. And obviously I discussed those problems. Hey, man, six says, can I get a wrench back? It's all good, fam. I already got a list, bro, and don't worry about you. Don't worry about you. You're good. After tonight, every, I'm going to be giving out wrenches after. I'm gonna, Manually, I'm going to be giving out wrenches um, on YouTube Studio. I'm going to be putting wrenches out. So, Okay. Oatmeal says, have to wait a week for... <laughs> have to wait a week... It's going to be nuts. Cuts are coming soon, so we got to watch out for that. Robert Gravino says, can everyone stop brag uh, begging the man for a wrench? <laughs> oh, boy. We got Maurice Williams with the Super Chat. What's going on, man? He says, yo, Joey, do you think Nick called a good game? Um, with what he had, because it's, it's hard for me to say he did because potentially these guys just couldn't play. You know, when you have backup third, fourth stringers, it's hard to call a good game when they don't have the skill sets to win you a game or the, the, the skill sets to, to hold for a play that's supposed to be designed for somebody. Obviously, I thought our run game was better than our passing game. That's definite. Okay, with Kenneth Gainwell had a good day. Miles Sanders looked pretty good with that first, second run. I liked it. I liked it a lot. But Boston Sky had a couple good runs. I thought the running backs, I think the running backs are fine. I think they're all great. I've had no problems with any of these running backs. None of them, really. Most positive I've seen now the running backs. I really have not had any problems with these running backs. I think there's a really good competition going on. I think the Eagles are loaded at that position. But, I, you know, it, it just depends. It's just when you don't have your starting offensive line, you have third, fourth stringers. You know, besides Herbie being a backup, that's really all you had. So, and your, and your quarterback has to panically throw the ball, panic throw the ball, because 
There's nobody, you know, you're, he knows he's getting hit every single play. Matt Pryor, he's giving up two sacks. I mean, and he's just getting beat every single time. Couple penalties, holding calls. It, it all comes, it all comes around full circle. So, a good game for what he had, no. But I think if he had his starters, and he would have had a better game with the play calling that he did, probably. But appreciate it, man. Um. Commentators, I think Jay Jaw is bad. I don't think he is that bad, but his biggest problem is separation. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the <laughs> well that makes him that bad. He can't get if you can't get separation, you you can't do anything. You know that's the whole that's the point of being a receiver. Like yeah, it's your route running, it's your route tree, it's how gifted you are with that. But at the same time, you can have all the tools in the world, but if you can't get separation, it is what it is. Um. Uh, so big tickets to go. So Alex Jones was probably the best player out there. I agree. Six tackles. He had to come out of the game. And I was like, you better sit down. Uh, Rock Reveals had to tune in every stream and video. Joey is the most consistent creator of this, uh, with his opinions. Hey, I appreciate it, uh, Robert. Robert's always in the chats. All, some of you guys are always in the chats. Some people are new. Some people have been here a while. Some people have been here since day one. Um, I do appreciate everybody being here. 209 people in the chat. Appreciate everybody being here. Guys, have a subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be covering more live streams every game this year. And uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to be the Philly Shakedown podcast this Saturday on my channel with Philly 500. Should be... <laughs> there's going to be some blood boiling this week. So definitely check that out. Subscribe to the channel. Check some of the check some of the content. If you guys have it, if you like it, great. If not, leave a like before you leave today. It does help the channel out a lot. If we get over 300 likes, really do appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's, I think we're, you know, I, you know, the, I couldn't deal with this by myself. You know what I mean? So to talk to you guys, it makes me feel better when I go to sleep at night. No joke. Like when I talk to you guys, like if I didn't have this live stream, I would be up all night. Like last night, I was up most of the night. I couldn't sleep last night because I was actually really excited for today. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Hitman 6, I appreciate it, Fab. Fly goes fly. Hitman 6, I appreciate it, bro. Much love, man. Big D says, JJ stands for Jabroni Jamal. <laughs> Oh, my God. Veal Parmesan sandwich. No, I'm just kidding. That's from Sopranos. I was going to say the last line, but I can't say it. Uh, Comet Star says, I got to go, Joey. Have a good night, bro. Comet, love you. See you later, bro. JD says, Joey, did you see the pic of Lurie's face mid-game? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> he was sitting there like, oh, man, this is this is bad. This is bad. This is not looking good right now. Isis Howard says, new playbook needed for sure. Uh, Eagle Slayer, what's going on, man? If Hurts gets traded tomorrow, I don't know what to feel. I know it won't happen. It's not going to happen. He went to the hospital. I'm not worried, I'm not worried about it. Spick Six to Go says, also, I think it's linebacker is going to be good this year. Um, this line, The linebacker core is going to be fantastic. I, I love it. We're starting to get production out of our linebacker core. That's really stood out the most out of training camp in this whole offseason. These linebackers. Nick Rallis, the linebacker coach, getting the best out of his players. Especially, you know, Jonathan Gannon. I mean... He's getting the maximized production out of his players, especially at linebacker. This is the position that it was more of a mystery than a weakness because Jim Schwartz played favorites, kept Nathan Gary in games. And, it you know, it really messed everything up. You know, veteran favoritism has messed this team up since the Super Bowl. That's 100% truth right there. 100% truth. Tyler has, says, love Sanders. Well, he will get over it. Thou I love Sanders. He looks, he looks explosive. He looks good. I mean... I don't really, I'm not really big on them benching him. Like, I'm actually glad that they played him today. I'm actually glad they did because you know what? He doesn't have to play anymore. He doesn't have to play next week. He could just let him rest, let him get ready, let him get prepared because that ball is going to him a lot uh, this year. So, Ole Miss says, we still have that Super Bowl from four years ago. <laughs> we do. Best moment of my life. Uh, Willie Alvarez says, keeping out uh, good players can get other players hurt. Um. I mean, it's either one or the other, bro. Like, yeah, you keep starters in. Everything is a risk. The draft is a risk. Signing a free agent to big money is a risk. Signing a everything's a risk with with sports. Uh, that's that's what it's about. Like, you keep players out, you hurt your backups. You keep your starters in, you hurt your starters. I mean, you either go either way. I don't know which. You know, it's it it is what it is. Like, that's just the name of the game. That's what happens. Um, Torville says Matt Pryor looks like he doesn't want to be out there. Acts like he doesn't care. I don't know. He looks really sloppy with his blocking. He, he I, I, he, he's gonna get cut. I mean, he's, I don't know. He's horrible. It's, it's that bad. 
Uh, Darrell Thornton says, back to the chalkboard. Let's get it. Fly goes fly. Definitely. Oatmeal says, do you know do you uh, anything about Jalen Hurts' abdominal pain? I mean, it's just a stomach bug. I mean, really, I think it's just a stomach bug. Abdominal pain. It's it's just he probably had a stomach virus or he just didn't feel good today. And that just happens, guys. Like, there are sometimes I go to work. Sometimes I go into work and I feel horrible. And, like, I can't work. I can't do anything. It just depends. It's just, it's just what happens. Chris Mayer says, do you think any stars will play next week? Because we usually don't. Um, but we usually have four preseason games instead of three. No, at this point. I don't think they're starting anybody next week. I think they're resting everybody. I think they are resting everybody. Uh, Benny Chase said, I expect a big year for Quez Watkins this year. I do too. I think he's the second. I don't know. It's going to be tough. I think he can actually be the second receiver um, and do a really good job. If, if, if Quez Watkins pans out, he has been balling out. Joint practice balling out. First game last week. Obviously nothing today because we couldn't we couldn't throw to to the, we couldn't throw to air today. I mean that's that's how bad it was. Biggie said Matt Pryor was a bona fide scrub from day one. Um, Victor, what's going on, man? It says Rager was out there struggling against a special teamer at some point, not looking too great. I, I don't know. I mean, they're really just testing people still right now. I mean, they're honestly just testing. I mean, I, I would like Rager at punt returns. Like, I would rather feel more comfortable at Rager at punt returns. Like, they put Greg Ward at punt returns for a little tiny bit today, so I don't know what they're doing. I, I didn't mind Jason Huntley at kick returns. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. They're they're still they're still testing guys out, guys. I mean, they're they're not they're not safe. Just because you see them on special teams doesn't mean they're starting at that position. Like they're just testing guys out on what they could do, and they're testing a lot of guys. They're just doing a they're giving guys reps, and then obviously by the end when they start to make the cuts, they look at special teams and say, hey, this guy could play on our offense, and this guy could play kick returner. Let's put him there, and then it's okay. Then you can figure it out from there. Provis, I have Donald Payne after watching the game. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet you did, bro. I bet you did. Towers, I love your video. People like 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 his stuff. Uh, Towers, love your video. People like like his stuff. Who 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 are we talking about? Who stuff? I don't even know what we're talking about here. Um, Tony Scar said Nelson Stinkalore is better than JJ. And well, that's that's definite. I think any receiver in the league is better than JJ. Uh, Rob Buck said this was uh, to find players at the back end of, of the roster. And I think that's I think there's some truth in that. So if Sirianni was like, you know what, since Jalen Hurts is going, let's bench the defensive line, the corners, and the offensive line, and let's see what the back end of our roster has to give. Uh, you know what I mean? So Ray Byers says tonight Patriots played their first team the whole half. Mac Jones got first uh, got first team reps. They blitz our second, third team lineman when gave up 13 points in the first half. We played second or third and third defense. It, it was ugly. It was just really ugly. And they were gassed. The de- if the offense gets off the field too fast, your defense is, is, is still tired coming back on the field. Eagle Sarah says, I'm not trying to toot my horn. Yes, you are. You always toot your horn. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but Alex Hamilton will be a Hall of Famer when it's said and done. Wow. Hall of Famer. For Alex Singleton as a Philadelphia Eagle, I like the sound of that. And look, he's very productive. I mean, we found him as a gem last year. Every time the Eagles have a bad season, we always find those gems. I mean, it always happens every time. I don't know why, but it always happens. It always happens all the time. The MMM family, Higgins says, terrible way to end my shift. Well, keep your head up, bro. The season hasn't started yet. The Eagles are resting. Nick Sirianni's not giving away his playbook, and we're getting prepared. So keep your head up, man. Keep your head up. Big D said, about to try an iron sheet and pressure I see. <laughs> Richie April. That's that it was Richie April. That's what I was trying to do. FMN Brad said, release Michael Jaquette, uh, demote Epps and third string and sign a safety. Release Mullins, J Jaw, and Hightower. Re- you want to release J- Hightower as well? I wouldn't release Hightower. I'd keep him on the roster. Because really, at the end of the day, you really have no more. Other than J.J. Ortega Whiteside, you have no more receivers, really, other than that. Jamon Osmond, did he even play today? I don't even know at this point. So. Uh, one above all says, Shakes, you deliver with these lives. Keep it up. Dude, I appreciate it, man. It's all about, you know what, having fun, talking to Eagles, and that's it. I mean, we're not really having too much fun today, but at least, you know, we could, we could kind of, you know, I don't know, let it, let it all out tonight. Zernay at 3 LM says, all I want to see is a pass from Hurts to Devonta Smith. That's what I want to see, too. Um, Robert says, really need McLeod back. Kavon hasn't shown much. Well, he's aiming for he's aiming for a week one. Um, he should be coming back week one, but not practicing for this long is alarming. But obviously, he's, you know, he's trying to get his, his ACL better. Um, so he should be back. 
it's not saying much, but I mean, he's probably if if Kevon Wallace keeps doing this. I mean, this is the last time Kevon Wallace will get healthy before the season starts because once he starts getting hurt after the season, he won't even be playing, and that's just the truth. Alexander Ford says uh, we didn't look good in the zone. No, we looked horrible in zone with these third, fourth string guys. We looked horrible in zone. They were just like a receiver would pass him. He would just you know just be like touch him, and then it's just like. <laughs> they're just standing there and I'm just like what are they? It, it looked like it, it looked like they weren't even playing zone it looked like they were just blowing coverages that's what it looked like that's what it looked like pretty much but the every had Jerry covering the best uh, Gary covering the best wide out on the other team yeah like Chase Claypool against the Steelers after, after they lined Chase Claypool in the slot last year and had Nate Gary I mean he got beat on the first step that's how bad it was F men Brad said come on Wallace is all talk Hope not, but Dash is six. What's going on with Philadelphia and stomach aches? First, Embiid and now Hurts. What happened to Embiid? Did something happen? He signed a big deal. I know that. Did something else happen with Embiid? I don't know. The 803 Hitman. We could have at least got French Vanilla with the play calling, though. Yeah, but you're not going to give away too much of your play calling. Like, you, if you had your starters in, it would work out. You know what I mean? That's why you, that's why you don't give too much during preseason. But when you have your starters in, you get to see some production with some, you know, regular base play calling. But I didn't think they have to give way too much in this game. Eagle Sarah says, come on, Wallace is a Jalen Ramsey wannabe. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh, so they, Sorry, I laughed at that. Uh, what would you think of the Eagles sign Richard Sherman? I do not like it at all. I don't. I as a back, If he wants to come in as a backup, sure. But if he wants to be a starter, not going to happen. Sorry, no, never, never going to happen. I bet you say, Wallace expectations, Brian Dawkins, reality, Mike, Mike Mitchell. <sighs> He's taken way too much from him, honestly. Just, uh, just says uh, the game was awesome up to the muff snap. Yeah, it was. It, pretty much the game was good. The run plays were good. Kenneth Gainwell, Miles Sanders. It was looking really good until that, that, that bad snap from Herbig over 10 feet over his. I mean, I don't know how he snapped it that far up. I mean, that's. I played center like in middle school. I never snapped that. I mean,. It's really, I mean, if you got a nose tackle on you, obviously it's, you know, you have to watch that. You have to make sure that that's, that ball snapped. If you could snap it without looking down and make it, you know what I mean? So it's it just depends. Willie Alvarez says, how am I supposed to look forward to the next preseason game? Well, this is preseasons. By the end of preseason, you want the season to start. So you're not really looking forward to it. You're looking forward to the season starting. So, I mean, there's something to watch. I mean, that's really the only positive thing about it. But at the end of the day, it's... It's not really something you really want to enjoy. You know, I mean, you enjoy it, but you're not like, you know, go crazy about it. But he says, don't remind me about Jalen Watkins. You talk about a scrub. <laughs> uh, Betty Chase said, I think he is a second receiver on our team. Eagles fan uh, 220 says, we're going to be rusty week one if no stars are getting consistent reps. If they think this is what we're, if they think this is the answer, if Nick Sirianni think this is the answer by benching these guys tonight, then I guess it's out of our hands. Because if we look that bad by facing Atlanta, it's all on Nick Sirianni. It's the blame goes on Nick. The blame all goes on Nick Sirianni. If if we look that sloppy by week one, which they shouldn't, but if they do, it's on Nick at the end of the day. Matt says, Mo, uh, Mullen's time for you to go home to your own <laughs> San Fran. Yeah, pretty much. They won't take him back, though. That's definite. But DC Wallace also has the same number as Kurt Coleman. Tyrod just said Boston on kickoffs is fine for me. Mike Freeman says Smith kept getting open. I love what I saw. No, I love what I saw from him. But the pressure was it's just the offensive line. We had no starting offensive line. I mean, you had third, fourth streak. Besides a backup in Nate Herbig, you had nobody on that offensive line. Nobody. Toth. Matt Pryor, Jack Driscoll was actually moved to right guard because they had to, they needed to move him to right guard. I mean, that's not his position. They had to move him because Matt Pryor had to come in and play right tackle. So because of bodies, because of bodies we didn't have, that was the reason why. That was the reason why. Hold on. I lost my spot again. This keeps happening. I don't know why. Eagle Slayer says, that's, our, that's your boy, Big D. FMN Brad says, there are still very good free agent safeties and quarters. What I saw today was horrible. How he changed something in that depth. The depth is bad at safety. The depth is bad at safety. The depth is bad at safety. The, bat, the depth is bad at cornerback. 
it's not good. I'm, I'm realistic, guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, we're fine. No, we're not fine at cornerback. Zach McPherson is still learning. And obviously, <clears throat> I couldn't breathe for a second. Um, he was still learning. And, um, you know, you have nothing. You, I mean, Kavon, C- uh, what, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Kavon Seymour. You have Hill. I don't know what the first guy's name is for Hill, that cornerback Hill. Um, Josiah Scott, I mean, Elijah Riley is, is bad. I mean, it's bad. I mean, it's really bad. Like, why are we still in this position with the cornerbacks over and over and over? Steven Nelson, thank God he's here. But I'm telling you right now, if you get her at that position, we're done. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're not, we're not done for the season, but it's, it's going to be an eye opener for teams to, to pick on Zach McPherson this year. And it's going to be bad. Like, we're now we're dealing with the same thing over and over again. Next year, they can't play with it. Eagles are going to have draft picks, whether it's three first-rounders or two first and two seconds. They're going to have cap space. Bring somebody in. I don't care what it is at this point next year. You better draft the best cornerback. If Steven Nelson doesn't resign next year, they got to draft the best corner next year and get depth behind it. But I think because we're going to have more cap space, you know, we're, we're going to... We're going to be a lot. We're going to be under the cap finally next year. I think the owners got the cap space up to two hundred eight million this uh, next year, which should be like. Tw- I'm hoping you know the Eagles should have thirty to forty million cap space uh, somewhere between then or, or lower, depending if they give Dallas Goddard that extension, which won't kick in till next year. If they do it, it's a different story. But mm. we'll see though. Robert, anyone remember um, Nate Loa and Jer- Jeremy Bloom? Philly fan says, I honestly feel that Ward has been a show lately because of the use of Rager in the slot. Ward is better. One-handed catches are nice in practice. Yeah, I understand that. But I, I think I think they're lining up Ward. They're lining all these receivers. Nick Sirianni is making all these receivers intermediate, which means that they're lining them up at all of three receiver spots. This way, we have mismatches every game. Every receiver is comfortable and not just a receiver is not playing one side of the field the whole entire game. You know what I mean? So it, it's really nice to see that. It's really nice to see that they're moving all over. I think Greg, Greg see, it's, it's crazy because Greg Ward's not really the fat. It's like Greg Ward's not really a very so elusive and he's twitchy and he's fast. I don't know. Greg Ward is just uh, he's very good at the top of his route. I don't know why, but he just is. And he all right, maybe he does have a little bit of speed, but it doesn't. You don't really when you think of Greg Ward, you're not saying speed. You're saying like route running's good, separation is really good, but um, maybe it just doesn't show too much. But I do like Greg Ward a lot. We got Nick Johnson with the Super Chat. Appreciate it, man. It says, fans need to chill out on the Wallace Hightower Rager coaching was terrible last year. They might not be great this year, but a year under his, uh, this detailed staff will test what they really got. And that's Nick Johnson said it perfectly. See, when I see fans that call Rager a bust, I'm like, dude, really? After how this offense played last year with a quarterback that literally couldn't throw a screen pass or a five-yard pass last year, an offensive line that was changed 14 times, like the passes to Rager last year, two passes got him injured, suicide passes, and on top of everything else, you have a coaching staff that didn't know how to put their guys in the right position to win football games last year. Nobody played good. Nobody you could single out that played great last year. Everybody looked horrible. Everybody looked terrible. Gain Devontae Smith was like the icing on the cake for this team. On top of Rager, you got two first-round receivers and a third receiver in Quez Watkins that is showing that he could be a number two. That could be probably far more than that. Maybe the more we see, the better he's going to be. But there is something promising about this roster. This team is going to be competitive. This team is going to be tough. This team might not win a Super Bowl or get to an NFC Championship game, but I'm telling you right now, this team is not going to give up this year. This team is going to surprise us this year, and I think so, and I really think that a lot. Jalen Hurts is obviously the big piece to the whole puzzle. He has to work out this year. He has to at this point. So we got to figure it out, but telling you, it's we have to look at it that way, and I think it's going to happen. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Depends what, when, when this team gets hot. Maybe this team gets into a slow start. Maybe they win a a sloppy game against the Falcons. Could happen. But at the same time, you know, it's about the coaching. It's about the development. And I think they have all of that this year. This preseason game is not going to show what we're doing this regular season. This preseason game just shows, like, Nick just made a bad decision tonight. In my opinion, he did. Just because Jalen Hurts isn't playing doesn't necessarily mean that you have to bench your offensive line. 
You got to bench your defensive line. You got to bench both your cornerbacks. What looks are you supposed to get? Maybe he said, you know what? Let's change it up tonight. I think this team is ready, prepared. I'll get them prepared during practice. Let the back end of our roster, the deep depth, let's see what they can bring to the table, which will give us more of an eye view of who makes this roster and who doesn't. That's what I take out of it as of right now. If I said that, you know, that's where it makes sense to me. That's it. Eagles champ, what's going on? So Jalen Hurts had stomach pains, was rushed to the hospital, now has to rest why he didn't play uh, play call uh, how he does uh, does 53 men. No, he's not doing the 53 man roster by himself. Just like how just like just like just like Nick Sharani said that how he was doing the draft and he was doing the and he was just coaching the guys. It's not true. Um, Jonathan Gannon had a hand in this draft. Nick Sirianni had a hand in this draft. It's not true at all. I, there's nothing. Not, Howie Roseman did nothing wrong tonight. So everyone's going to get off Howie Roseman. He did nothing wrong tonight. There's nothing that Howie did tonight. Okay. As much as I don't really like to defend Howie Roseman, he didn't, he did nothing wrong tonight. So people saying what Howie Roseman did, there's nothing, there's nothing that Howie Roseman did today, period. There's nothing wrong with him. He did nothing today. Still gotten taken two one five six eight. Nothing was wrong with Hurts. It was a backlash they received because Joe made one luck pass. Now all of a sudden Hurts might not be the guy. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like he threw his like and you know what? Flacco did had a good game. I thought Flacco did a good game last week. I thought he played good. Not just the screen pass to Quez Watkins, but it's a screen pass. It's not like he threw a fifty yard bomb. It's not like you know what I mean. Like it wasn't. Not, it's a screen pass. It's a pass that's thrown fi- fifteen feet away from you. Like it, it's it's not. It's fifteen to twenty feet away from you. It's nothing that's like oh my. God, you know, he gets all the credit now because he throws a screen pass. A screen pass is a screen pass at the end of the day. It's how that receiver gets the pass, follows his blockers, and gets open, and obviously finds the, and, and uses that vision to get in the open field and get that touchdown like he did um, was good. Big D says, I'm not writing off Rager yet. I'm not either, bro. I'm not either. Jack Johnson says, bro, why are people acting like this is week one? <laughs> I I don't know. Like I'm trying to make sense of it because I just think there was just bad decisions made by how they substituted today. Other than that, you know, I have no problem with today. I mean, I don't. You know, it is what it is. You lose preseason games. This is this is what happens. But you literally had like the the the, the Philadelphia Eagles popcorn maker dude that was sitting in there could have played tonight. I mean, that's how deep we were tonight in our in our depth. And I guess he wanted to see the back end of our. You know, Nick wanted to see the back end of our roster today. I mean, I guess that's the whole deal of what happened. You know what I mean? Kid Sour says, we got a super chat. Do we? Oh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Daniel Weber says, hey, Joey, I know it's only preseason and many of the starters didn't play, but it's disappointing how the team. Yeah, it's just it's just we didn't want. I mean, just imagine going to that game. Like, just imagine going to that game, be like, oh, we're going to see Jalen Hurts. We're gonna see all the, and it all just happens. So, like, imagine doing that today. And that would happen. Oh, man. That would have been really bad. Rich MC says, Gl- a glutton for punishment. Now they're re-showing the game on the NFL Network. <laughs> I want to rewatch again. Uh, as much as I don't want to, I have to rewatch it. Uh, FMN Brass says, depth is D+. Danny says, thoughts on the linebacking core? I thought they played great. Singleton had six tackles all over the field. Looked fantastic. TJ Edwards had a big hit today. I thought played really well. Had some good tackles. Eric Wilson. Eric Wilson, again, always getting those tackles in the backfield and letting go of the guy. He did it again, second week in a row today. Um, he did it again today, which was d- disappointing, but I think he'll play better over time. Um, Jannard Avery, eh. Not really liking him too much. I think Sean, I think it's going to be Alex Singleton, Alex Singleton, Eric Wilson, um, Sean Bradley. I mean, you're, you're seeing, and now you're seeing some really good, really, this linebacker core is producing very well. It, it's sticking out to me. I'm like, whoa. I mean, that's crazy how the, how good this linebacker core has been playing this offseason. I mean, you're seeing more of a, it was more of a mystery in the beginning of the year. We're like, I don't know this. We don't, we don't know if it's a weakness yet because we still need to find out what these guys can bring to the table with Nick Rouse as the linebacker coach, Jonathan Gann, getting these guys together. Um, we'll see what happens. I think, I think, you know, even with Sean Bradley, I think Sean Bradley, I think is the fourth best linebacker on the team. Um, I think, I I think it's Alex Singleton, TJ Edwards. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think you have some good guys there and Eric Wilson, obviously. So, uh, boy, boy, boy. We got Nick Johnson with the super chat. Says Hertz is the guy. Why are fans acting like Flacco has a chance? The locker room is behind Hertz and Flacco can't handle pocket pressure at all. 
you know what? It, no, because he has no he has no mobility. I mean, he's got no mobility. That's why he can't handle it. He's just and this is why he starts to panic throw. He panic throwed. He literally was trying to get the ball as fast as he possibly can because he knew he was gonna get tackled. I mean, there's no even there's I mean, there's no even there's no reason to even talk about Nick Mullins today. Nick Mullins was just like I mean, when he dropped the ball and he like looked down, he was like, Oh, I dropped the ball and he like goes down real slowly to pick it up. I'm like, Oh my god. Even when Joe Flacco Joe Flacco when the when they, when Herbig put the ball over his head, he goes, he grabs the football, and then he tries to reset his feet, jump on the ball, stop, tra- don't make a play. You, I mean, that saved us a touchdown right there. Like, don't j- just jump on the ball and keep it to your stomach. Just jump on it. Like, you're not, like, the ball went back, like, 30 yards. Like, why are you even set, trying to set your legs up to try to do something? Dude, just land on the football. Like, he, he, he tried to pick it back. He picked the ball up, and then when he tried to reset, he lost the ball. I mean, geez. I mean, you don't have to do that. But that's a good statement, though, Nick. I agree. I agree 100%. John Kelly, Patrick Johnson has been consistently good as... Patrick Johnson, he didn't play good against Steelers. He had, like, maybe a tackle or two. I mean, I don't think consistently he played good. Um, Patrick Johnson's more of a project. I don't think he's... He's definitely not... He's definitely maybe the fifth best... Maybe the fifth best... Probably the fifth best linebacker. I mean, depending if Jannard Avery is better, I don't know. I mean, I didn't see much from him today. So I think fifth best linebacker is Patrick Johnson right now. I don't I don't think he's consistent, but I don't think he showed consistency last game. But Elitian Kavan Wallace needs to share with Mills a green hair, but I both play the identical twins want to beat off plays like Byron Maxwell. Uh Tony Scar says positive out of this. Is there an is there is a lot of easy cuts coming home? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of easy cuts. I mean, that's that's definitely definitely telling you. Nas says is this live. Yeah, of course it's live. Uh, as for loyal apologies, says some of these fans should just go bandwagon some some other team. Uh, Flash style entertainment says we had uh, two and third str- uh, third string in the whole um, game. Everyone chill. Um, Zone eight three LM says a guy I haven't heard much news about information. Jac- Jacoby Stevens has been injured. Um, that's why you haven't heard anything from him. He is injured right now. Jacoby Stevens, I'm very excited for. Hopefully by next year, I want him to be that Malcolm Jenkins piece to be that hybrid linebacker slash safety. See what he could do. You know what I mean? Like maybe put him at safety full time. So I mean, I want to put him at safety. I would like to put him at safety full time and see what he could do. So big leader for LSU. Tim says Flacco was never mobile. Flacco is always a statue. <laughs> 204 people in the chat, guys. Appreciate being here. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Much love uh, to everybody that showed up to the, li- the live play player. If you're just joining now, do appreciate it. Subscribe. Guys haven't liked the stream, please like the stream up. If we get the 300 likes. Um, I haven't really been checking, but I'm um, keeping the chat open so I don't miss anything from you guys because I because StreamYard is not good with picking up with the, with the chats and everything like that. So uh, appreciate everybody being here tonight. You guys haven't liked the stream, please like the stream. Uh, description below, check. Follow me at Twitter, at JoeyShake72. I, I, I'm actually just almost hitting 900 followers on Twitter, which is awesome. Didn't expect to really hit that many followers, but do appreciate everybody following me on there. Uh, you see some extra stuff for me on there, some stuff with my life and other things like that. So I put some extra things on there. And obviously the memberships uh, down below as well for extra content and obviously for your loyalty, ba- loyalty badges uh, and emojis. So join the Shake Squad Army today. Subscribe and like the stream. Much appreciated from everybody. Much love um, from everybody. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see where we're at. Robert B says, all I'm worried about is our depth. What if our O-line gets hurt? Knock on wood. And yes, Flacco did get sacked and fumbled because of our depth also and, and the snap. And that's 100% true. It's 100% right on that. 100% right now. Fly for him flies. Some guy on Twitter tweeted that after tonight's game, cutting the roster to 53 won't be hard. Probably could get it down to 43. <laughs> That's probably true. It's probably true. Danny says the vision is a winnable and schedule is easy. So I'm definitely not writing the team off based off preseason game. Plus they did well in joint practice. That's what I'm saying. Like they did. They beat the Patriots head on in, in joint practice. But the way that Nick totally took care of today's lineup was just unacceptable today. Um, if he thinks this team is ready, then sure. Then that's fine. If he thinks that they're, they don't need to work, they don't need to play a snap or two, it's fine. If that's the case, then we're all good. Jack said, but Joe Castro is <laughs> thinking he was going to get to see Ertz. Divide. I felt bad for Joe. I'm going to message Joe later. Be like, Joe, I'm sorry, man. It's like a waste of a trip. 
Club, I mean, if he just went there and enjoyed himself, then who cares? You know what I mean? But, you know, when you go there and you spend money and, you know, then you're wanting to see what you want to see, it, it is what it is. Uh, Crypto Tago says, Flacco to Smith, highlights look so nice. <laughs> uh, Michael Mascarino says, uh, says, Davion Taylor, he is hurt right now, unfortunately. He is hurt. Willie Alvarez says, Dog at halftime stole the show with those catches. Oh, they had that. They had, see, I didn't see that. They had the dog show at halftime like they usually do at, at the games. That's cool. DJ Chris Lutz says, Smith with hurt scrambling is going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be great. Timmy says, I like your channel, dude. Keep up the good work. Tin Man, much love, man. Hey, look, if everyone loves the channel, great. People don't. It is what it is, bro. I try to do as much as I possibly can. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, Kurtago says, yes. Uh, Ray Marissa Taylor is hurt. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting lost in my stuff here. Mufat says, Smith looked like he got separation on most of his routes, if not all of them. I thought he got, I thought he got, mo most of them he got separation. Um, Revolution GRN says, who's the most underrated player on this team? Underrated? Oh, man. I think right now, like for me, if, if I go defensive side of the ball, I'd probably say Milton Williams because I really think that he's going to be such a great rotational defensive tackle slash defensive end this year. If I say underrated for the offense, I say um, Kenneth Gainwell. I think is going to be a really good one-two punch with Miles Sanders. If that's the case, um, I don't know if they're going to. I don't know how the lineup is going to work with Jordan Howard. If they're making him the third or the second, I don't know what they're doing. But I think Gain will be mixed in this offense and, and the way he can run the ball and catch the ball and look like a wide receiver out there. Because I think he's a dual threat back. I think he's going to show a lot more than what we're thinking. I mean, he's a fifth round steal, guys. Kenneth Gainwell took off last year because of the virus, obviously. So his draft stock did did go down, but. He should have been a late second, early third round pick last year. He should have been at least an early third round pick last year, if I could say. Maybe a late second's going too far. I think maybe an early third rounder, but a lot of potential there with him. Knight, 2107, Fulgham, is he not a number one receiver? No, he's definitely not number one. Charles Dead says, Joseph Flack Jacket Flacco. I like that name. Uh, Jonathan Three Elms and Mullins uh, and JJ for Foles. <laughs> oh my God, this is getting bad. The 803 hit band says Devontae's feet are almost as quick as Ocho and can separate like a couple headed for divorce. <laughs> Evan Brad says, How are fans calling us fake for addressing the prop? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, that's, that's why I ignore those people. Like, just ignore those people. Like, you know what? However, you think your team is doing is your opinion. And that's, it could be with anything. You have an opinion about everything in life. You know what I mean? If it's about sports, about whatever, it is what it is. Um, you know, just gotta ignore those people. Can't say they said Jalen Hurts has the poops. <laughs> I think he had a stomach bug. I think that's what his Eagles champs is where uh, Umbrella Man, when he's getting cut waste by seeing his face, and Ben sent him to Dolphins with Mock Collins. What what a disgrace. Uh, Nigel says, Joey, can I get a wrench? Big, big fan. <laughs> Philly fan says, uh, Nick looked beat during his press conference. He seemed annoyed that he had to lie to the fans. What if Hurts is trade because of he's not getting traded? He went to the hospital. Like, you're telling me he still went to the hospital today and you still think he's getting traded? Like, Come on now. Come on now. You can't believe that. Can't believe that. Uh, DB Talking Now says Singleton and Watson still looking good together. Uh, Danny says, I love Devontae's route running. So smooth. It, it is smooth. It, he looks so great. Even when he caught the ball on the flat like that, when he was open in open space, and he turned. I mean, he was so swift with his legs. I mean, fantastic. Uh, and Crowder Raptor says, I will take Jamie Newman over Nick Mullins any day. Why did Jamie get cut? I, I guess they thought Nick Mullins was better. I, I, that's all I could really say about it. Uh, Jay, he said, always love commenting to the streams, man. Jay, I appreciate it, bro. Hope you have a good night tonight. I mean, obviously, you know, it wasn't a great night for everybody, but the high hopes are still here. The, you know, we still have a few weeks left to the regular season start. So Daniel Garber says, if we look like this in the regular season, I'll be, <laughs> yeah, I, I hope not. Obviously, I, I'd be really... Sorry, Tony. I meant Professor Gatewell. We have to name him Professor Gatewell. Eagle Chance says Nick Mullins is a bad signing from beginning. Uh, what would you do? Think of taking note? Sedfeld or sign? Uh, Giants released him. 
Uh, Willie Alvarez says Smith is a stud, and with new coaching staff, Rager will be uh, a one a one ball receiver, first ballot receiver, huh? He's a walking golden jacket. That's what Devontae Smith is, a walking golden jacket. Eagles Clip says, do you think Dillard will get traded? I saw some rumors today about there has been teams calling about Dillard. So uh, they even they even benched Dillard today. Why? <laughs> they even benched Dillard today. He didn't even play today. I totally forgot about Dillard. Nice. Says, what happened to Fulgham? I don't know. Even with the joint practices, I didn't see much from him. I mean, not much was even released on him. Uh, the first couple of days of training camp, when training camp first started, he was doing well. And then re- the open camp, he had a good catch. And uh, to the public, he had the open camp to the public, he played well. But I haven't seen much, and I don't know why. Uh, Commander Jenkins says, Birds are 2-18 and 18 on third down, haven't been outscored 52-0 in the past six quarters, and have only run the ball third time. It's only preseason, but these are uh, head scratchers. Fly for a fly says Devon Smith runs on three legs. That's that's definitely true. <laughs> but the other thing quote summarized the game at this. I could get a good look at a bone by sticking my head. <laughs> nice, nice quote from Tommy Boy. Love that movie. Um Marion John says Sirianni was stuttering like crazy during his presser. I gotta watch it. Uh Sir Dilly says, Don't freak out, it's freezing. However, I feel the Eagles are cursed at wide receiver. I don't think so. Another freak says, Daniel Gomez had it just has a down year since get rid of Carson and got the assets. We'll have a ton of work with next year. I, I think, I think, you know, I think we will. Um, I want to, I want to see, like, I think this year when it comes to uh, the, the Eagles in 2021 is really finding your building block pieces this year. Like, obviously there's no high expectations because I think there's a lot of pieces you have to look for. And then obviously you get rid of the dead weight. You could be trading a veteran or two next year for more draft compensation, more, more draft, uh, more, uh, you know, uh, cap space. Um, so, <laughs> Cam says Kenneth Gain yards well. That's a good name. Eagles Cam said we need to realize our wide receiver special stars never practice with Flacco. So relax. I'm not even. Yeah, but there's no. It does. Of course they practice with Flacco. They practice with Flacco a lot of times. That's not the the reason. The reason is we had too much. We had a third. We had one second string offensive lineman with third string, fourth string offensive lineman on top of it. I mean that's the reason why. Nick Johnson says Fulgham has a lot of promise. Still has been hiding from how how well Rager and Quez has been playing. I, that's how I feel too. I don't know. I feel like he's in the back like. Maybe he feels like, I don't know, maybe he's his mindset is not there. I'm not really sure. Edmund Brass said, McNabb messed with the whole franchise. Went to a party before the Super Bowl, and T.O. said not to. Willie Everett says, you think we are keeping Ertz? I, I don't know. I mean, it looks like it right now. I mean, if you get rid of Ertz, you get $8.5 million in cap space, and then you'll have over $20 million in cap space under the cap, meaning we're not over the cap at all. We're not over the cap right now, which is great. So I don't know. I mean, I think with... I don't know. You, Jason Krumis probably has a career-ending injury this year. You know, uh, Tyree Jackson is probably – he's going to be out eight to ten weeks, but keep him on the shelf. Keep him on the IR. I need to see Tyree Jackson at the end of this year or if, depending on the health of our tight ends, and we need to see him next year in this competition. So, Michael Anthony Matcher says, what do you think we can get for Dillard? Uh, not much. A late-round pick is much. Maybe a six, a fifth at the – six at uh, – the least maybe a fifth, and that's maybe pushing it. Carlos says, uh, good jokes. Uh, Danny says, uh, well, they have a lot to draft picks, cap space next year. I think this year is a learning about Nick Sirianni. I think it is. I think it's about the, the relationship between Nick Sirianni and Hurts, and obviously seeing how Jalen Hurts plays this year. That's what's going to happen. MJ Healer says, uh, you think we'll have a good a good season? I think so. I think this team will surprise us, but I think they'll be competitive. I think they'll be tough, and uh, hopefully they're prepared. That's, that's all I got to say. Because the blame is going to go on Nick. The blame is going to go on Nick Sirianni. If they look sloppy, it's going on Nick. It's all going on Nick. At the end of the day, it's the coaching. Like I don't care how bad the players play, but if Nick doesn't put them in the right, Nick is drawing up the plays. Nick is putting them in, have to put them in the best situations. If if this team is doesn't look prepared, it's on the coaching staff. It's on. It starts with Nick Sirianni, and, and that's that's what it is. Uh, Carlton Roberts says, I thought Janet Gamewell looked good. No, Janet Gamewell looked fantastic, dude. I, I can't wait. In the passing game, the run game, he's always making somebody miss. I mean, he's looking really good out there. 
Tony Carson says, we might get a family bag of Doritos for Dillard. <laughs> and the other says, will Quez have a breakout season? I don't know. I mean, if he has like six to 800 yards, I think I'll be happy with it. I mean, I'm not expecting to do crazy amount of anything. You know, I, I look, I would love him to get, I would love all these guys to get a thousand yards, but realistically, I, you know, I, I think, I think the, 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 the distribution of the football will go to every receiver. I think all of them will produce highly if they all work together. Seriously, what, what does Jaquette do that makes Gann put him out there? They're, it's preseason. They're going to be playing guys that aren't going to make the roster. This is what it is. I don't think Jaquette's good. Even last year, I thought he had an okay game against the Cardinals. You know, obviously the worst game against the Cowboys last year at the end of the year. And, you know, it's just he's not good. I mean, period. He's just not good. Danny says, I can't remember. Is Dickerson clear to play this year? Is he still recovering? No, I, I think he's just a healthy scratch right now. He's on IR. He's on the roster right now, but they're just not touching him right now. I mean, this is just literally him. Just eh, There's not much going on. They're not really doing much. So, Evan Brass is Dillard for, th- for th- third round. That's way too much. That there's no, if they, I mean, it's a, that's a steal. I mean, that's a steal right there, if that's the case. Tim has, I think it's an adjustment for a few teams just to have to get a few games underneath their belt, then just a few will know what they got. And I think that's that's the truth right there. They're just trying to test out the back end of their roster. Bag, uh, Brad Wright says, Eagles look like Doug and Schwartz full game plan for us tonight. <laughs> Eagle Cook says, I would give Dillard and a fourth Chiefs Henderson for a young quarterback to build with. That, that would be good if they could pull it off. Um, the 803 uh, hitman said Jack Stahl wasn't too bad. He did what he could. I thought Jack Stahl played good. He had, what, two good catches? He had one catch. He broke two tackles for the first down, and or I think he did break for the first down. And the other one, he caught a good ball. So um, I thought Jack Stahl played good. I thought he played really, really good against, obviously, other backups, but I thought he played um, – I thought it was promising. I thought we got something really good out of him, so – uh, Danny said, I still think Cam, I think Cam is why, I don't think Cam is good like he used to. Ever since his injury and obviously that Super Bowl loss, he really hasn't been the same after that. Uh, Michael says, we st- we need to keep playing stall. I think that's that's what we'll do next week. Let's see what happens with that. Comer says, how many wins do you think the Eagles will get? I'm hoping seven to nine wins, but if they really surprise me, it could be ten or more. Uh, that's what I think. I'm not just saying Quez is really confident. I, lo- I love that. I think that's what's going to make his play better. And obviously having that chip on his shoulder as well. So I, I think so too, bro. I think I think it will. Evan and Brad, C.J. Henderson is the Jags uh, is on uh, on the Jags Eagles clips. Freeman Lewis says at the end of the day, if Hurts QB uh, will be just fine. Everything else just needs to fall into place. Once we start running our real offense, the defense will be fine. I think it's just a waiting game now. Let everybody rest. Get these guys practiced and prepared before that first game, and and let's just get it. Fly from fly. Why is nobody taking uh, talking about Zach? My man was struggling. Hopefully, we could adjust to get better. He played really bad. I mean, the, other than the Nikhil, uh, Nikhil Harry almost uh, dropped. You know, he dropped the ball before he really. I mean, he ended up getting hurt before he uh, dropped to the ground. But that would have been a fourth big reception uh, from Nikhil Harry. So it, it, it didn't look good. But there's more learning to do with Zach McPherson. That's why the depth at corner is not good. Nick Johnson, since players can't celebrate, how bad do you think Mills wanted to get up and flex after that fumble recovery? I don't know how he feels about, I mean, he's been around this team for a while, uh, so I don't know how he feels about playing his team, and, you know, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know if he's like that. I don't I don't know. Um, Underdog uh, Rager says, I actually believe Nick Sirianna is beyond cable. My question is, will uh, Cole Morons, Lurie Rosen allow the coach the team, or are they still on their quest to pretend to be football guys? Um, with Doug, I think he had, I think every decision was made upstairs from what he, you know, he was controlled a little bit, obviously. Hopefully Nick has some free, I mean, we're going to, I mean, we're going to find out. We're going to find out what it, what's going to happen here. Um, we're going to find out. Edward O'Brien, what's going on, man? How you doing, bro? Carlton says for sure. Uh, we're going on two hours, 10 minutes of the stream already. I'm going to go for another like two minutes and then that's it, uh, for tonight. Uh, definitely. So uh, I didn't know we were, I see when you talk about this for so long, you never know how, 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 uh, you know, you're talking about this for a while. Perhaps I'm going to do more cutting than playing since I'm Madden 22. I'm actually going to be streaming Madden 22. Most likely. I just, uh, I was telling people last year, but I was like, ah, Hey, if people, if people said some super chats for the game, I'll definitely buy it because I was definitely, um, I don't think it's worth a $60 game. I rewashed just you're you're pretty much playing for updated rosters. Um, so I was thinking about maybe doing a stream once a week on Madden and kind of just playing people and, and, and seeing what's going on. So I thought that that would be pretty cool to do um, and see. I haven't played Madden in a while. So 
Willie Alvarez has still played like Selleck tonight. He did. He he blocked. Um, he did some some blocking today, and he caught some really tough catches today and broke some tackles. I mean, you actually, if you have a tight end that can actually break tackles, it's great. Dallas Goddard could do it. Zach Ertz, not really, obviously, but. Um, Danny says, how do you see the NFC East fully playing out? I don't, I don't know. I mean, the NFC East is bad this year. Okay, we all know that. Um, depends if, you know, depending on the quarterback position for Washington, um, Dak Prescott with the Cowboys, you know, their defense is, uh, their defense is not promising. Their defense isn't going to win games. Like their defense doesn't have to be a top defense this year, but that offense needs to produce. Um, it's going to be, you know, the right shoulder of Dak Prescott on top, unfortunately, and obviously coming off the ACL, the giants, the offensive line, eh. And, you know, on top of everything else, you know, it, it's up to Daniel Jones. I think if Daniel Jones doesn't make the cut this year, doesn't really see that he's a, you know, could be a franchise quarterback that, you know, if they, if they're not, this is, you know, to pay him, you know, I think he's got one more year after this year, I think. So it's going to make a huge difference what happens. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Eagle Clips, I'm just ready to see the us against the Falcons. So. All right, guys. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Appreciate everybody coming in. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. We go over the Eagles news all year round. Subscribe. You're not going to regret it. We're going to go over. Obviously, we're going to live stream the Jets next week. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it for the 500. We'll see. Uh, but Saturday, we have the Philly Shakedown on my channel this week. Um, me and Philly 500, we'll talk about everything Eagles, especially this game. A little blood boiling, a little angry this week, so we'll see. Like the stream before you leave, guys. It really does help the channel. Hey, if you don't subscribe, like the video before you leave. And much appreciated from everybody uh, that comes in. Um, subscribe, like the channel, uh, like the stream, and I will see you guys later. Hope everybody has a good day. We'll have more videos out tomorrow, most likely. Um, a lot to talk about. And uh, I thought we got a lot off our chest tonight. So much love to everybody. I will see you guys later. Remember, shakes go up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.